Rear Guard by the Missouri State Highway Patrol Troop C, Corporal Scott Brown. McBee, 
72, Michael Van Schleit. 73, Brian Greninger. 74, Bruce Tapp. 75, Dalton Ford. 76, Jacob Hendrick. 77, Brent Wilson. 70. Welcome back to St. Louis, everyone. Day two of the Show Me Bowl 2012. Edward Jones Dome today. The Missouri State title games in classes two, four, and six. We get it going this morning with class four, Webb City and Helias Catholic. Let's take a look at how these two teams got here to the title game. The run for Webb City, it went through Sullivan and St. Mary's and they make the title game again in 2012. And for Helias, they go through Clayton and then the rematch against Harrisonville. They make it to the title game today, looking for win number seven in a row as they take on the defending state champion, Webb City Cardinals. And hi again, everybody. Neil Harwell along with Richard Baldinger. It's great to have you with us for day two of Show Me Bowl. And Baldy, you got your three hours of sleep. You got your espresso right. going. How you feeling? Today? I feel great. Good morning, Missouri. Good morning, world. The show me ball is back. Well, let's go for it then. Let's talk about Webb City first. They have a guy running the show at quarterback. He's done an outstanding job this season. That's John Roderick. Yeah, John Roderick at quarterback. He is the commander in chief of Fast and Furious for this offense, the Cardinals. I'll tell you, this is all about the split back veer. But John Roderick, the difference maker, is throwing the football this year. Probably the most accurate, the best quarterback they have 19 touchdowns a year over 60 percent completions want to see how he does this today look for some great things today yeah they're really effective when yep. they got a guy throwing the ball and how about the guy throwing the ball for Helias that's Wyatt Porter and he's had a great season yeah a Wyatt Porter a rhythm quarterback who get you've got to get him to move his feet in the pocket if not he's going to be very accurate but remember one thing he can extend the play too he's very accurate on the move so this is a guy who gives you both inside the pocket outside the pocket if they want to have a chance Wyatt's got to get it done today the Webb City machine has rolled into the dome ready to defend their title rolling. Helias is on a roll they're looking Do for their deal. seventh straight That's win it, buddy. you're watching show me bowl 2012 on Fox Sports Midwest hey great party oh thanks here you go one hamburger medium well uh this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burned. That's it. You're not going to come to my house and tell me how to cook a ham. Yeah, like, ah, really you wouldn't, you wouldn't do, do it there. You gotta be crazy. So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Show Me Bowl 2012 is brought to you by Farmers Insurance and by the Bomberito Automotive Group. Welcome back to Show Me Bowl 2012, Edward Jones Dome here in St. Louis. Boy, the Webb City ground game is fueled by a couple of guys that have run for over 1,000 yards this season. Phoenix Johnson, 
1,334 yards and 23 touchdowns on the ground this season. And on the other side of that split screen, Cooper Smith. Both guys run about a 4-6. Cooper, 1,038 yards on the season, 17 touchdowns, and he averages over eight yards a carry on the season. This Web City ground game, ultra effective as it has been for many, many years. And there is the head coach, John Roderick, in his 16th season. Seven years as an assistant before that. The numbers are staggering. Over 90% wins in his career. And it is incredible what the Cardinals have done as they look to defend their state title. They've won titles in 2008, 2010, and 2011 recently, but the string even goes back before that. And Phil Pitts is in his second season as the head coach at Helias. Five years as the defensive coordinator. He played on the 1998 Helias State Championship team. They were also runner-up in 1999. He brings that experience in here to the Dome today that he can give to his players as they get ready to play for their state title here in 2012. to go here in Show Me Bowl to start the day off. This is class four, Webb City and Helias. And Webb City, we talked about they won their rematch against Harrisonville earlier in the season when they opened up the season, 37 points put on the board by Harrisonville. And then later on in the year when they play them in the playoffs to get to this game here today, it was 17 to seven. So they only allowed Harrisonville seven points in that ball game. And in fact, Coach Pitt's brother, Andy, is the defensive coordinator. Here's the Webb City resume. Once again, they're undefeated. They defeated St. Mary's to get into this ball game. Talked about the leading rusher, and then also Roderick has added the passing game for the Cardinals. Exactly, and that's to tell you, and, and talking with Coach, as a former lineman, I wanted to know how did they do that because when you're in that type of offense, it's all about angle blocking, not doing a lot of pass sets. He said they had to spend a lot of extra time working with the linemen to take them from two types of thoughts, from being running all of this option offense to having you set up as a passing offense. So let's see how that works out today. To kick it off, it'll be Alex Easley, a left-footed kicker for this Web City team. Been kicking since he was a freshman. And back deep, that is Griffin McCurran for Helias. Start off the day with the Class 4 state title game. Right after this, it'll be Class 2, and then we'll finish the day at 5.30, Blue Springs and Francis Howell in the sixth title game. And the Dome is rocking at 11 a.m., folks. And easily gets the kick away. And that went all the way into the end zone. Big leg on that guy. College prospect talking about Alex Easley. And we're going to have perfect weather today, aren't we? We always do in the dome, don't we? <laughs> but it's a beautiful day in St. Louis outside. Oh, it is. No question about it. So here goes Helias, the Crusaders from Jefferson City. Wyatt Porter running the show over 2,400 yards this season passing. He's also run for over 500 yards. He's accounted for 32 touchdowns on the season for the Crusaders. And on first down from the 20 yard line, they'll run that spread offense. Exactly. Good. Try to create some natural running lanes here, going with twins formation. Have motion coming across zone defense. And they'll run the option play right away on the pitch back. A gain of about five yards on the run. That's Garrett Bush Jost. Look at the rest of that Elias offense. Across the front, got some injuries in there. Don't know that Will Fife will be in the game today, and he's a good one. Yeah, he is one of their starters. They looked like he was banged up early, but if they say he's back, got Tannehill at the wide receiver position. And Woodruff, Woof. he's Big caught gear. 48 balls this season. 
As a receiver, Bush Jost again, and not this time. Webb City all over him. Coming through the hole big time was Jose Spear. And also Taylor Artaburn, too, number 70. Artaburn, excuse me. Nice job on his part at that defensive tackle position. There's that Webb City defense across the front. You saw Jose Spear. Man, he is a good one. They talk about how consistent he, he is. is. And then the athlete. secondary, Harden has seven interceptions this season back there. And the Crusaders on third down. And Porter has his receiver for sideline. That's a first down to Anthony Woodruff. We talked about him. Nice job on the deep out that time. Look at the throw by the quarterback here. Colton Wyatt here. Nice job. He's a lefty. Sets his feet well. Delivers it to his receiver. Settling down in man coverage, makes the catch first down on the play. 19 yards, the 49th catch of the season for Anthony Woodruff, All-State performer. And over 700 yards receiving this season. And Porter ahead for about two yards on first down. He brings it out to the 47-yard line. Porter just a junior, Baldy. Yep. 6'2 and 207. And 526 yards rushing on the year. So I talk about this is a mobile quarterback, and when you're running the spread offense, you have a mobile mobile quarterback. Just makes it that much tougher to stop. Second down, eight for Helias here in the opening drive of the ball game. He is a transfer, talking about Porter, from Jeff City High School. So he just went across the way to Helias. And here they are in the title game, class four. Porter to throw it. And he'll run it now, coming near side. Shakes a tackle to midfield. And they've got him down at the 49-yard line of Webb City. Got to make sure you're rushing the quarterback in case stay within your lanes. As you said, wide Porter, ability to get outside, extend the play with his legs that time, picking up seven yards. So Helias on the move. Brings up third down three from the 49-yard line of Webb City. Out of that pistol formation with Bush Jost back there in the backfield with him. And a flag on the play. And this will step Elias back and make it a third and eight. One of the things, they didn't want to get in the negative side of things in terms of offense or defense here. Again, we saw last night, all three games, as they costly penalties within the drives, which in third and long, difficult to then convert. False start against the offense, still third down. So somebody, I think they moved, it was up front on the line. And now that'll bring up third down eight for the Crusaders here on their opening drive of the ball game. Class four state title game. Webb City and Helias. That no huddle offense. Some defense here. Got the blitz on the outside. Nice pickup. And the receiver right, has it. Once again, it's Woodruff. I think he's short of the first down. It'll be fourth down one. They just said a low pearl, pearl route. Nice job on the Let's bring in Corey Riggs now. Corey will be working the sidelines today. Corey. Hey, thanks, Neil. It's great to be back with you guys here in the Dome today. I talked to Coach Pitts earlier today, the Jeff City Helias coach, as they go for it on fourth down here. He said that the fun is done for Helias as they come to St. Louis, that he got his team together at 9.30 last night in the hotel and said, your families are here, your girlfriends are here, we're done with that. We want Saturday to be special. Nothing would be more special to Jeff City Helias than knocking the king off the mountain, that being the Webb City Cardinals. Guys? Yeah, no question about that. And they look like they had a drive rolling. They go for it on fourth down, and they don't make it. Yep. Big play in that series was penalty. the penalty. Exactly. Got to play smart football. We always talk about the physical side, but the mental side. Last, word in the, last night in the Kirkwood game, the costly penalty that extended the drive while Kirkwood eventually scored that touchdown. So here, again, when you're trying to play, get the call on the field, but when you're trying to get right now, trying to knock the 500-pound gorilla off the mountain, got to make sure you do everything right. And so that flips it over to the Cardinals of Webb City, 14-0 trying to defend their state championship. John Roderick at the helm. Dual threat, and he'll run nice it. Nice job on the read. Nice job by Helias. One of the first guys there 
It was number 25, Michael Tannehill from his linebacker position. He had 101 tackles on the season coming in today. Webb City up front. You can't run this fear option without some good folks up front. And that might be uh, some guys from last night's game, so we'll fix that. Take care of that real quick. Brings up second down and eight. Roderick to throw it. It's blocked. Rejected down there by Hale Hinches. He is a good prospect. 6'4", 215, the sophomore. You know, you can't get the sack, but a nice job in terms of just timing his leap, extending that right arm, getting in the throwing lane. Again, I want to see how John Roderick handles this now, third and long. Now he's going to go into a passing situation, see how protection is up front. Third down eight, Webb City. Roll in the pocket. Roderick. Oh, nice pass. He's got his receiver far sideline. Jalen Vaden, his 29th catch of the season. Nice job on the roll on. Again, one to see again going to his left now. How would the accuracy been? Here's John Roderick. Now watch him get his feet set. There he delivers the ball. This ball comes out on a frozen oh, rope. He had some smoke on, on that, that one. one. That's a laser, so yes. Now you see why this offense is so much more effective this year. Not only do you have the, the option, now you have a quarterback who can throw it. And his dad, John Roderick, said, I don't know where he got it. I can't throw it all. <laughs> My goodness, that one on a frozen line. I'll tell you what, I wonder how those uh, dinner meetings are. <laughs> well, his dad, John Roderick, played linebacker. Yes. And he went to Webb City. He went to Pitt State. We'll follow up on that story later we take a break you're watching show me bowl 2012 edward jones dome here in st louis back right after this boo <laughs> hey hey where are you going you can't get by me i'm number one in this class i rule this lab i'm number one hey hey i don't think so yes weather i am a king you wouldn't do it there. So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. What? Jerk. Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options. To help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there? The new maze record. Uh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. Thank you. Can I help you today? Uh, no thanks. I'm just looking. Oh, this is cute. <clears throat> so? You wouldn't do it there. So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Like they're the fashion police. <laughs> John Roderick and Webb City just picked up their first first down of the ball game on a pass from John Roderick. And he hooked up there with Jalen Vaden. First and ten Cardinals. Movement. So it happened to Helias, and now it goes against the Cardinals. I think it's Cooper Strasser, the tight end. And a little bit of movement. Take a look at the tight end, number 86. That's it. Just the tweak. Man. Wow. Talk about calling it close. <laughs> tight. The officials are ready to go here at 11 a.m., not missing anything. I mean, that, you got to be frozen pizza <laughs> up there on the line. Can't take a breath. First and 15 for Webb City. Give it to the dive up front. That is Cooper, Cooper Smith. 5'11", 185, senior that's run for over 1,000 yards on the season. You can never be wrong with giving it on the dive back here on the option. Nice job in the reach. All defensive tackle work out here again. So they're looking at that 3-3-5 defense. They're feeling maybe those inside plays. 
inside zone is going to be effective running today. Nice surge up front by the line. They come up with four yards on that dive play to Cooper Smith. Second down and six. Got Roderick pulls it out and he keeps it. Roderick trying to get the near sideline. There's Touchdown, speed. Webb City. 38 yards. And that's a great read that time as he saw the linebacker, Tannehill, collapse onto the dive back. And it's a keep by the quarterback. I see if we can freeze this right where you see Tannehill. Watch 25 close. Now freeze it, guys. That's where it is, right there. That's why the quarterback goes and keeps it. He sees they're going to play the pitch back on the outside. That's a keeper for me. And there's the speed to the outside. Touchdown on the play. John Roderick with his 14th touchdown of the season on the ground. He has thrown 19 touchdown passes as well on the season. Here's Easley. And another whistle on the play. I think they had some confusion up front. Somebody's got to have quarterback on that. Neither we didn't have it was on the linebacker outside. Nobody came from the inside. Nobody from the defense end played out. Two wide open. So you got to make sure on this. You get option. Whatever your key is, you have to go to it. That's all you can look at. False start. It's the offense. Still the try. So they'll go for the re-kick after the false start on the offense. That'll put the extra point back at the 15-yard line. So 25-yard kick here for Easley which is basically nothing for him. Easy kick. He, he is an outstanding kicker. Let's look again at Roderick running the football. This guy, remember, he is 6'4", 195. And again, it looks like inside linebacker got caught off. Also Tannehill on the outside. But again, you got to make sure on your reach, who do you have? Dive back, do you have quarterback? Somebody there in Hawaii's blue coverage that time are contained. And John Roderick, there's the speed we see now. is building to throw the football, but also run the football. He's the director of Fast and Furious, and it happens quick with the Cardinals. And he had that little oh, lean oh, down the sideline oh, oh, to stay oh, in bounds. The scoring drive with the big 38-yard touchdown goes for five plays. Only took about a minute and a half. And Webb City will kick it off, leading 7 to nothing here in the state title game. You got to make sure you just said those linebackers. And Tannehill on the outside, Schulte inside. You also got Shane Colonias. You got Nathan Schlepper, Shepherds, excuse me. Those guys are going to be important that they flow over the top. They get to the responsibilities for the Crusaders. If not, those lanes open quick. John Roderick, I'll tell you what, nice job on the read to keep that time. Touchdown on play. Easley once again drills it deep. My goodness. That's a weapon right there. In the end zone every time. Bomberitos is the number one automotive group in Missouri for the third year in a row, outselling everyone in the entire state and was named 51st largest automotive group in the country. Show Me Bowl 2012. Webb City and Halias here in class four, the state title game. Webb City strikes first. They lead it 7 to nothing. Elias moved the ball a little bit, suffered a penalty, and came up short. And on fourth and one, they had to flip it over to the Cardinals. They run the option here. Butch Jones, oh, he is cleaned up. Diving low is Todd Fowler, the linebacker. Came in with 74 tackles on the season. And here is that Elias resume. 10 and 4 record, but they've been on a roll. This is six in a row as they reach the state title game here, looking for number seven. Told you all about Wyatt Porter. They got their revenge on Harrisonville after losing first game of the season. And then last game, they beat Harrisonville to make it here to the state title game. And that's a very good Harrisonville team. Yeah, big victory, 17 to 7, man. To be able to get, continue here to the dome. Loss of one on the play. Porter has his receiver. Oh, they rallied to the football. This Boy, they a, really did. They completed the pass to Hale Hinches. Boy, he is a good one. He's just a sophomore, 6'4", 215, getting a lot of looks. You're getting the old zone defense here, and underneath, balls delivered. Watch how many white jerseys rallied to the football here, folks. Everybody making sure they get part of the play. 
And I'll tell you, this defense here for Web City, talk about their offense, they only give up 7.9 points per game here defensively. So just as they are offensively, defensively, they're going to come after you like Hornets. Gain of five on the play. Roll Porter. The and now he'll run. He oh, but he got lit. Coming up to make that stop. Alex Lane. Say that. The defensive end position. Yeah, Alex Lane came up to make it 6'2", 185, junior. You come back, you better make sure you have eyes in the back of your head. That job that Alex Lane worked up the field that time. Closed it from the back side. Good job on the tackle. And on fourth down, J.C. Schumagala back there to kick it away. Good field position for Webb City again. Yeah, bounce backwards and down at the 47-yard line of Webb City. And I think for Halias offensively, got to make sure you just move the ball. Can't give midfield position for this offense for Webb City. We take a break. You're watching the Show Me Bowl. by me. I'm number one in this class. I rule this lab. I'm number one. Hey, hey, I don't think so. Yes! Weather! I am a king! Woo! You wouldn't do it there. Woo! So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. What? Jerk. Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options, to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. Hey. The new maze record. Uh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba -da, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. position again. The first drive started at the 46 for Web City and now they start at their own 47. And there's the faithful from Helias that have made the trip over from Jefferson City. First and 10 Web City. Roderick will throw it. Post. Oh, hey, wow. his receiver. It's caught there by Slaughter. Wow. Touchdown, Cardinals! How about that throw? Just a slight roll to the left. And Slaughter on the post that time. Absolutely showing blazing speed. Well, they Beats say he's coverage. a 4'6", four, 4'7 four, type guy. And that one was on point on the throw. It goes for 53 yards on the hookup from Roderick to Slaughter. That's where this offense is now. He's shown the running attack in the last series. Now you're seeing the passing attack. Again, quick points for the Cardinals. And on to try the extra point, Alex Easley. And it is 14 to nothing, Webb City with 5.20 left here in the first quarter. Baldy striking quickly with some, maybe some things he didn't have in the toolbox before. Now they got Roderick throwing it. And he's just down the field. And again, I just think they blew coverage again on that one. I think the linebacker that on that play Number 28 on the inside wasn't involved. Kind of just let him release off the play. That was uh, Schmagala at the uh, safety position, excuse me. And then coming across trying to make a play at the end there. Is that Dufenhofer for Halias? Well, and catching the ball, Cole oh, Slaughter. Slaughter. A guy that's getting a lot of interest from colleges, and Roderick hit him right on the money. Nice catch, though, by 
Slaughter, as he pulled it in, that's his 35th catch of the year, his 10th touchdown. A guy that came in averaging over 17 yards per catch on the season. And Slaughter is 6'3", 215. He's got good size. And you can see a nice job of extending his arms. And how about the accuracy on the throw? But a good job there by Slaughter getting down the seam that time. Cole. And right on the money Cole. with his quarterback going through coverage. And again, miscommunication by Helias in the secondary allowed Slaughter to be wide open. Easy pitch and catch. And Baldy, you always think of the success that Web City has had, this fear option program. They run the option a lot, a lot of rushing yards, and Roderick's kind of giving them a new dimension with the way he can pass the ball. Exactly. He's the tight end within this offense, usually just doing stock blocking, but again, this showed that his ability as a wide receiver to get lined up only as tight end, also put him in the slot or put him at X at six foot three and his ability to create separation. You saw the athleticism. That's what makes this offense so much more dynamic now. As again, are your eyes focusing on those dive backs? Now all of a sudden you take a step forward, guess what? There goes Slaughter right by you. Roderick's, Roderick to Slaughter for 53 yards and a touchdown and another touch back. back on the kickoff by Easley. Easley just making it easy, isn't he? I mean, his kick team can sit in an easy chair when he's booting a deep. Well, Helias has their work cut out for them now. Wyatt Porter and company, 14 to nothing down, 520 left here in the first quarter. Wyatt Porter needs to get this offense going. I think continue to roll him out of the pocket. Quick outs. Showed some good accuracy in that first series. Here's the give to Bush Jost. Initial and they penetration. drag him down. Let's go back to that touchdown, Baldy. Yeah, just want to take a look at Cole Slaughter again on this route. He's lined up right at the... Uh, He's lined up right at that. Yeah, that's it. He's right here in the slot. They lost him. And again, that's what we talked about. He's usually at the tight end. He's in the slot position there. And this is his ability to run routes. Nice job in terms on his part in running the route. But again, miscommunication in the secondary. And the pass was put where only he could get it by Roderick. On second down, here's Porter. Pressure again. And he just had to throw that one away. Coverage downfield right now, secondary here for the Cardinals, has been significantly improved since that first series. But again, if there's only five men in the box, you're going to have to be able to run the football. Haven't had any effectiveness with that. So again, you've shut down the running attack, haven't been able to go down the field with the ball here since that first series now. we got trips over on this side. Let's see if they can handle something or get somebody open. Brings up third down and nine from the 21. Porter out of that no huddle offense, empty backfield. Cover two right now. Trips to the near side, and he looks that way. Got him. He's got his receiver. That's a first down to the 41 yard line. Once again, he one. hooks up on the pass, and this time it's Cole Disler. Nice job of Cole Disler running against his own. It's a cover two. He finds the hole between the safeties. Quarterback has time. Disler sits down, gives his quarterback a target. First down on the play. That is his 59th catch of the season for 900, over 900 yards. He's six touchdowns receiving this season. And oh, and taken down in the backfield by Webb City. Coming up strong is Dalton Humphrey. That's his 105th tackle on the season. Yeah, just on this option play now. He's got pitch all the way. You see his head. He doesn't even look at the quarterback. He's going right for the pitch man, able to make the play. So a nice job on Webb City taking care of quarterback, but also on the pitch man. Humphrey's on the tackle. Yeah, 5'10", and Humphrey goes 175, the senior. Second down, 15 after the loss of five. I think here with only five men inside the box, they want to come back inside with the run, but he's going to pass it. Porter coming near side, it's incomplete. And he was looking for Cole Disler again that time. Cole Disler oh. took his route inside. Quarterback read that defense that maybe he should have broke it off to the out route. See him talking right now to him. So again, miscommunication. Now you're in the third and 15, so kind of throw out half the playbook. 3.44 left in the first quarter. And Porter 
with receivers left and right, empty backfield. Porter scrambling out of the pocket. And just has to throw it away again. The pressure was good and the coverage was good. Yeah, Easton Carver coming from the left side at the top. Look at the spin move he does and then to continue to work across the field. And Easton Carver in the ball yeah, with that. He was on by Carver. And I'll tell you what, Justin McCollum who's playing center number 75 for last. I'm going to be watching him. It looks like his left hand's wrapped up pretty good. So, got snapped with your right hand, but you really don't have your left hand to grab with. So, you know, tough to battle there in the middle. And once again, to kick it away, Shuma Gala. Back is Phoenix Johnson. Nearly had a crease. A and he's out to the 49 yard line. A little extracurricular. We got a face mask right at the end. I wasn't sure if the official was going to throw that. But you see, just as Phoenix Johnson was going down, good when it went ahead and he's got his face mask just grabbed just as he was going down on that tackle. So that'll tack some more yards onto the run. Take a look at it again, Neil. You see, just as he's going down on the ground, you see the one hand come down. Again, on the punt return, getting upfield. There's the left hand down on the ground. And just he's stumbling and coming across mm. him. You think that was Blake Wilbur's 57? Yes. Oh, 15 tough yards. Personal foul. Face mask. Against the kicking team. First down. And the great field position continues for Webb City. This drive will begin at the 36-yard line of Elias. And I think, again, you've got to just watch where Slaughter lines up. He's not at that tight end position. He gets again into the slot. And here he is on the left side now. Again, nobody out on him in terms of coverage. He's wide open again. Let's see if they go ahead and... Oh. They run the option, option back to Phoenix Johnson. Nice play by Shane. Colonius, the linebacker, 5'11", 180, junior. Let's go down to Corey. Hey, guys, I know you've been talking a lot about John Roderick, the head coach, and his son, the quarterback. You know, it's not easy when you're the quarterback at Webb City. It's even harder when you're the son of the head coach. You kind of live your life under a microscope. But when we talked to head coach John Roderick, he said he couldn't have scripted a better senior year for his son. Next year, he might even be following in his dad's footsteps, becoming a gorilla at Pitt State. But the story doesn't end there, guys. John has a little brother named Tyson, who, guess what? He plays quarterback, too. He's a freshman. And here's Phoenix Johnson for a first down, down to the 21-yard line. Yeah, nice spin move. Excellent job on the trap play this time. Watch Fowler, the right guard pull. There's the kick out. And then here's the spin move, a whirling dervish. Phoenix Johnson getting involved in this offense. A little misdirection in the backfield. Come with that cross play, and that's what you do. You counter back on this with this option. You run the trap. Effective there, first down on the play. And he goes for 15, and it's a first down for the Cardinals. On the pitch back to Johnson. Oh, gave him the leg and took it away. And then tripped up inside the 10 after picking up another first down. Talk about inside, outside, gyrating in the open field. In the trenches, this is where it all starts. The option dive, it's a nice job there in terms of quarterback Roderick reading the pitch. Gets it out to Phoenix Johnson. And man, when he gets in the open field, oh! Was it the turf monster? I just no, made a shoestring tackle. It was Dudenhafer, Dudenhafer that just tripped him up. No, he grabbed a shoelace. I think that was about all he got. Yeah, he would have been into the end zone. He's so marking at the water. eight. Marking at the eight yard line. First and goal, Webb City. Give it to Cooper Smith inside the five. He That's okay. stopped there by Taylor Ivan. You're never wrong giving to the dive back, and what it does enough is you make those linebackers maybe a step slower from getting to the edge at times. So again, now watch him again. Quarterback John Roderick decide to keep it the next time and get to the edge and touchdown and play. We saw that earlier. Second down goal, Webb City already leading 14 to nothing here in the opening period of the state championship game in class four. Defense, 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 defense. 
counterplay. Oh, they keep it back and inside. And it's Smith coming near side. Touchdown, Webb City. Five yards on that run. Yeah, nice job on the cross uh, action. You got a holding call that's going to bring it back. On the edge. But that was set up perfectly. The confusion is you're pulling right guard, right tackle. Linebackers think it's a counter going to the left. And here comes Cooper Smith out to the right. A little cross field action. Holding against the offense. 10 yard penalty with Pete second down. You know, talking about Coach Roderick and Corey talking about the father son relationship. You never know, Pitt State, that's where Coach Roderick went to school. Well, he's got a daughter there right now, Haley. She plays basketball at Pitt State. They went to the Elite Eight last season, so everybody kind of getting into the athletic flow in the Roderick family. I tell you, Cooper Smith is also two over a thousand yards rushing for him, too. Usually that's the fullback position, but he's got the athleticism to get outside also. Roderick will throw it this time. Oh, he'll run it now. Nice job in his part. Inside the 10, tiptoes his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Webb City. Sean Roderick a showing poise on that rollout. He saw his deep man was bracketed. His underneath route was taken away. So I'll hide the football, and I'm just going to find walk myself through the minefield and get into the end zone. Look at this. He wants to throw it, decides not to. And now just cuts back against the grain and finds a way to get to pay dirt land. 14 Woo. yards on that touchdown by Roderick, his second running score of the day. The first one went for 38. Easily has the extra point. Roderick has also thrown a touchdown pass. 21 to nothing, Cardinals on top. Yeah, watch John Roderick on this. And again, this is great quarterback playing in sense now. He doesn't try to force the football. Keeps his eyes downfield, and there is his, his shake in the open field. Now he puts the ball away, gets both hands around it, but he's able, able to extend it, loses it at the last second, but it already crossed the goal line. But again, quarterback showing good touch in terms of throwing the ball but also showing leadership deal and not trying to force a football where the defense could have maybe created a turnover. You've got a running attack, you've got a passing attack. Neil, am I waving the white flag? That's a, that's a <laughs> dangerous combination. And already 21 points here in the first quarter. And Baldy, they have not had to go very far. No, when they get the position. football, they start their drives first at their own 46, then their own 47, and then the Halias 36 after that face mask call, so they haven't had to go very far. Well, and the other thing is, too, right now, they've been so effective with running the football, and again, that automatically just opens up the play action, because I said, linebacker's first key, first step to be coming towards the line of scrimmage, it puts you behind in terms of coverage. And then on the other end, with a kicker like Easley, Halias starts their drives at the 20-yard line every time. This will be the fourth time that they've started at their 20. Tell you what, he does, he booms it every time. I mean, that, that ball comes off, you can hear the thud that comes off. So the battle of the field position is being won as well by Webb City. So, Elias now, after getting the haymaker thrown at him, down 21 to nothing, still plenty of time left in this ball game for them to get something going here, driving the football, back out there with their junior quarterback, Wyatt Porter. Casey Craig at the nose tackle position. He's played pretty well so far here, Neil. A couple of series. I'm telling you, these front three, they don't get knocked off the ball for the Cardinals at all. Aggressive at the point of attack. On the move, Porter. Oh. Shakes Boy. one tackle, but here comes the cavalry. There's a flag on the play coming up. Keontae Harden to make the hit. Yeah, but how about Kyle Crane? A nice job on that part. And also Jose Spear. He doesn't get any stats if we get a call here and if we get the penalty call. But again, everybody in position maintaining leverage. Now your buddies can rally and make the tackle. This one will go against Webb City. Now, did you see what the flag was on? I mean, he led with his head on the tackle, but and that seemed to be when they threw the flag. I'm sure that they walking it off. Or if we get the call on the field, we'll let the on, men boys. strike jerseys make the call. One. It'll be a first down foul. for Helias. We have a face mask Let's on this one. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness against the defense. Okay. Foul a little bit. First down. 
going to protect the quarterbacks. Even if they don't slide exactly right, they're going to make sure that nobody's leading with their helmet coming with the tackle. First and 10, Helias. At the 36. You got two tight ends, nearly only five men in the box. You would think you'd be able to run it back inside. Let's see if they do that. And now the Cardinals look like they're going to bring a blitz to the outside. Linebackers moving around. Four verticals. No cover. Great cover. Porter trying to go underneath on the route near side. That's incomplete. The intended receiver was Jonathan Wilhaber. I tell you what, nice job in coverage in terms of that zone defense getting a good drop by the linebackers underneath. And there was nowhere to go with those four vertical routes. Quarterbacks just trying to buy time. Good protection up front with only three rushing. But eventually, got to go with the short pass. Not much on the play. Brings up second down 10 for the Crusaders. Porter quickly gets it out in the flat, but that one is cleaned up just as quickly by Logan Williams. Watch, after you talk about a defense that swarms to the football. Logan Williams there quickly on the wide receiver screen. Again, watch number 80 come up inside in the alley. And look at everybody. Look at all the people in position in terms of leverage pursuing from inside out. Even at that ball, there's no chance for anywhere to go with the receiver out to the catch. Third down, 10 for the Crusaders. Porter going up top. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Dessler. That was intended for Cole Dissler, and in the coverage, I think Logan Williams is back there to help break it up there. He is number 80. Nice job on the coverage. Again, Dissler finds the hole in the zone, but Logan Williams able to get that right hand across and strip that ball away. And Elias now two for six on third down. But see, that's what you see in the zone defense. So many times people set up Neil and they, and they just watch. These guys for Webb City absolutely attack the football defensively. And another Go, punt upcoming Go. for Halias by Shumagala. Phoenix Johnson. I guess he didn't go down. No, they can't get him down. Comes out to the 32-yard line. Running the ball. In the 32-yard line. And so Webb City leading 21 to nothing. That's the end of the first quarter of the John Roderick Show. He's thrown for one and run for two in the Show Me Bowl. Welcome back to the Dome here in St. Louis. Class 4 state title game. And right now, Webb City, after one quarter of play, has Elias down 21 to nothing. And Webb City has the football once again in good field position. Not as good as they've had it. <laughs> Does it really matter with this offense? So explosive. So many weapons. The wide receiver position, the running back position, the course your quarterback, John Roderick, whether he's throwing or running the ball. And he brings his team to the line. 
first and ten from the 32. Counterplay. Phoenix Sorry. Johnson. He's got about five yards on first down. Right behind his left back for that time. Nice job on the pull. Kick out. Get behind him. Making a play. Coming up on the stop, Justice Schulte, one of those guys. The linebacker, he's all state. This is not a typo. He came in with 203 tackles on the season. And he has the career record of 427 in his career. Raise a school record, and he's certainly a prospect to play in college. Justice Schulte. What? What? Roderick has another first down to midfield. And that is a gain of 17. I'll tell you what, watch Jordan Green, the left tackle. He's the strong tackle here in this Veer offense, but here's the misdirection coming back. And again, look at everybody hat on hat and continue to move their feet. Nice job also by the center that time, Kent, Mason Kent, 51. Again, what you're seeing up front, and what I like as a former lineman, sustain. As long as you're staying on those defensive linemen, linebackers, you got a body, they can't make a tackle. That was a gain of 14, actually. And yeah, Mason Kent, he's been playing with an ankle injury, missed a couple of games earlier this season. And here comes Cooper pass. Smith. The chase is on, and he is set. Sack back there by Schulte. Schulte again, we're in the pistol formation, Neil, on this one. He's trying to get to Cooper Smith on the underneath halfback and trying to go with the little halfback pass. But again, Schulte on this one here pursues up the field. Nice job on his part. Boy. Again, making the tackle. Did he throw a burst? Oh, he did. He came out. He when he saw the red meat back there, he put on a burst. I don't know why. Again, That's his third sack of the season. These are one of the new things, one of the new wrinkles they have in their offense right now. And that's not a very good wrinkle for sure. You might want to throw that play out. Schulte, they just call him a ball hawk. I guess that's inherent when you have over 200 tackles on the season. Phoenix Johnson on the dive. And just swirling through there. And back to the original line of scrimmage almost. Neil, I'll tell you, when you watch this quarterback, John Roderick, I'm going to just show you the mesh point. Watch how he works down the line right there. See how tight he is? See his eyes? He's working down to the defense end. He sees the defensive tackle getting washed down. That's a give read, so a nice job on his part. But again, takes the quarterback with good feet, good eyes. Nice job by John Roderick that time on the handoff. Third down and 11, upcoming for Webb City. The big sack by Schulte put him in a hole. Here's Roderick coming near side. Got his receiver, Phoenix Johnson. Johnson. And he's got a first down for Webb City. I thought maybe we might have a flag on that with a helmet-to-helmet hit. Yeah, that was a big hit coming up. Trent Dudenhofer. Hafer. 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 Dudenhafer. Ooh, that's really close. I, well, of course, I know the running back's not considered vulnerable, but still, though, I'll tell you what, a tough hit. But how about John Roderick on his throws going to the left, rolling to his left? I mean, look at the spin he's putting on that football. Not much to not like about his game no. so far today. He's got Roderick again on the rollout. Has his receiver right on the money. That's a first down. It's caught there by nice Strasser. 6'2", 210, the junior. Nice job on the rollout. He's got Cooper Smith underneath here. Decides he can, feels he can get it into the tight window and find Strausser on the out route. Look at he's just dragging across here on that route. Nice job of getting eye contact with your quarterback. Ball's delivered right on the money. First down near, and the machine just keeps rolling. Rolling thunder. Cooper Strasser on that catch for first and 10. Now at the 22-yard line for Webb City on another drive. Look at that. Wow. Roderick on the move. Oh, he's got another touchdown. This one from 22. I'll tell you what, running the option, his mechanics at the quarterback position, and one of the other things, you've got to have the quick feet. Simply outrageous on that time when he pulls it here. Watch again, working down the read, and he sees now that they're going to go ahead and take that dive back from the defensive end, excuse me, the linebacker position, pulls it, now get upfield quickly. Doesn't, doesn't have a lot of false steps. Gets going north and south. Touchdown on the play. 
Well, you talk about it, the quick feet, Baldy, no Gotta question, and he, he's 6'4", 195. Oh. Don't, don't forget about yeah, exactly. that. exactly. I mean, he's a slender-built kid. You'll see a lot more weight go on him as time goes on at yeah, the next level, no question, but he's 6'4", and was, just stepping through there with those good feet. Yeah, it's Tannehill at the linebacker position, and he went ahead and had to dive back that time. But again, quarterback, you notice he keeps his eyes focused right on his read. So when he pulls that, but again, Neil, so important once the quarterback pulls that football. No penalty on the play. You've got to get going north and south. A lot of times they'll take one or two extra steps and allows defense to pursue. He gets downhill real quick. Webb City, a town of a little over 10,000. And there's probably not a whole lot going on back in West City right now because there's a whole bunch of them yeah. here and as watching. you look across to the far sideline. And this was a team, Neil, that was, what, third and what, what was it, second or third and second and 16 on that drive and able to overcome that, the big sack. It came right back to Phoenix Johnson and John Roderick just running the opposite. Tell you what, and throwing the football. There's, How do you stop this offense right now, Neil? They're on a roll, 28 Ooh. to nothing. Well, nobody's figured out how to stop them for 44 straight games. And That's the winning it. streak coming in today. Five plays of over 10 yards on that drive. And remember last night, we had met some of the fans from Webb City. They said, this is the best passing quarterback we've ever had in this offense. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, those were the fans coming and uh, coming up to us and telling us that. Watch this kid play. And he's done it with his feet he, as well. He's got yes. three rushing touchdowns and easily has kicked it into the end zone five times. He's got to go to the goal line. we got to back him up. Man, yards. let's go down to Corey. Hey, guys, before the game today, there was a special ceremony. They do the tradition ceremony before a lot of these games here in the Dome, and they recognize teams from 20 years ago. Today, they recognize the Webb City Cardinals 1992 state championship team, and there you see the jersey of number 85, Jeremy Mallory. Jeremy was a linebacker on that Webb City Cardinal team that won a state championship over Rockbridge. He couldn't be with the team today. He's been stricken with an illness. He's confined to a wheelchair, but his teammates more than anything else wanted him to be recognized today and everybody here in the dome thinking about Jeremy Mallory from Webb City. Well thank you for that Corey and, and those are the memories that you have playing with your yep. guys back in high school and they certainly remember him. Nice play there on the hook up to Hale Hinches. He is a good one and uh, well you go back to the traditions of this Cardinal program Grant Wistrom and the Wistrom brothers and on and Everybody on and that's on. been involved, exactly right. And our prayers are out for that young man, and hopefully things work out for him health-wise. And I like to hear that. A full block in the middle. Here's Bush Jost picks up the first down for Helias. And how about this Bush Jost guy? He is a junior, and you know he wasn't running the ball. I mean, they, they had some injuries, they had some things happen, but they noticed this guy that kept. He was on the Making practice everybody squad. miss they on the tackle practice him. squad. They said make him the tailback. And they put him in about halfway through the season, and now he's got almost 800 yards coming into this ball game today. And a shotgun spread. Nice job on the handoff. And get the first down on the play. Garrett Bush Joe, 6'1", 157, junior. And he's back there with the quarterback, the junior Porter. So these guys both coming back next season. And there goes Bush Joe. And he's out to the 45-yard line, and he's close to a first down. I tell you what, that's a really nice job on uh, Bush goes that time in reading him. Watch him press the front side and then make the cutback behind his center. Again, there's the zone block front side, then comes back. Nice read on his part in terms of pressing the front side A gap, make the defense commit, backside, almost a first down on the play. He became the starter in week nine. Bush Joe's did after four injuries to running backs that were ahead of him and he picks up the first down he's into Webb City territory at the 43 yard line. Yeah, Elias getting some things going got some nice stock blocking on the outside Cole Disler wide receiver again these big plays quarterback team there it is look at Disler down the field getting involved and that's a 13 yard gain first and 10 for Elias that they just lined him up at quarterback and let him roll that 10. First down 10 at the 43, Bush Jost Bush has it. And he tries the left side, gains a couple down to the 40 yard line, give him three on the carry. That'll bring up second down and seven. The best thing about this is Webb City's offense is on the sidelines. So you're gonna have to get play physical game, you gotta run the football. 
time off the clock. And this now the deepest penetration in the ball game for the offense of Helias to the 40-yard line of Webb City. Prior to that, their deepest penetration had been to the 47 of Webb City where they turned it over on downs. Only five men in the box here for Webb City. You think you continue power running football straight ahead. Porter has got his receiver. And a little hitch down at that time. This time he completes it to Ryan, Ryan Tannehill, Tannehill, 6'2", 178, junior. Nice job on the route, coming back to your quarterback, give him a target. And Wyatt Porter delivers a strike on the outside. 15th catch of the season for Tannehill. And that brings up third down two at the 35 of Webb City. That trips to the short side of the field. So we to come back maybe to run to the wide side. They do. Trap. And they, again, lined up in that Wildcat formation with Bush Joseph, and he's got a first down. Farmers Insurance is a proud sponsor of the Missouri State High School Activities Association. Call 800 Farmers or visit farmers.com to visit a local agent. You are in, or we are insurance, we are farmers. And again, thanks to Farmers for being a great sponsor of Misha. And this one incomplete, little mix up on the. Again, them. Cole Dissler continued his route down the field. And this is twice now. Look at him drive off on the vertical route. And again, he's trying to do a double move. Quarterback's just reading that as an out. So again, quarterback wide receiver not on the same page. Three first downs on this drive for Helias. Second down 10 at the 31 of Webb City. That was Woodruff just trying to run the double move that time on the outside. Porter scrambling around out of the pocket. Now he'll run it to the 30-yard line. Maybe only got a yard on the play. Yeah, Kyle Crane from that linebacker position walked out, came on the blitz immediately. Quarterback felt pressure, had to step up in the pocket. And the guy that cleaned him up was Jose Spear, leading the charge for Webb City. Yeah, Crane's going to come from the left side. Quarterback sees that. Again, nice pickup. But again, it forces the quarterback step up in the pocket. And there's Spear on the top. Tenth play of this drive that started at their 20-yard line. This Porter. And again, he just kind of had to throw that one away in the general vicinity. Anthony Woodruff coming back. But the heat is on by the Cardinals of Webb City. Watch Dalton Humphrey come from the linebacker position. I don't know if we can get it in quick enough here because, well, we got a chance. But watch Dalton Humphrey come on this blitz. Watch him attack and come after him. And here's Spears That's in the middle coming after him too. But it's Dalton Humphrey originally who comes after him nonstop. Well, Jose Spear is an All-State player. They talk about he's just a great person. And not flashy, but consistent yep. as it gets. And now they'll try the long field goal. This ah. one's blocked. And picked up by Webb City. And coming up the sideline to the 46-yard line. Here's Nathan Brown, number nine, was the one who came from the right side on the block that time. And the guy that picked it up, Austin White. Yeah, watch Nathan Brown, number nine, come. Nice job on the knowing where the block point is in terms of coming off the edge. And lays out. Nice job of coming across from the hole. You see he's probably about two yards in front. That's why he carries his body across. Again, Nathan Brown, good job of turning. Now laying out. Lay those arms out. There's the block on the play. And here he comes, picks it up. Who will pick that up, Neil? Nate Brown, Brown. blocked it. Yep. And then Austin White, White picked it up and ran it back to the 46-yard line. And look at the field position again for Webb City. Roderick going right to work, going upstairs, looking down the field, nearly picked off at about the 15-yard line as Elias gets back in coverage. That is Todd Bush Jost that got back in coverage. What was that, a 50-yard throw, Neil? How about the air underneath that football? How about the spiral? Quarterback having time to throw the football. I think father and son, I want to sit there. I want to be a fly in the wall when father and son are talking X's and O's. Dad, enough of this option. Let's... Let's, let's become a throwing quarterback, I mean, a throwing offense, and he's doing it here today. 
Well, he had some cousins and guys like that that have been through the Web City program. Talking about John Roderick. Oh, Roderick. oh Chris my Chris goodness. Cross and Aaron Look Aaron. out. That's Phoenix Johnson. Johnson. Touchdown, Web City. Neil, they call this the crisscross. It looks like a counterplay. You have some misdirection in the backfield. Pull your left guard and left tackle. Watch left guard, left tackle pull. There's the crisscross action. And now coming back, Phoenix Johnson. And again, over pursuit. Great vision on his part. Shows the balance. And there he is, straightening down the sidelines. Touchdown on the play. 54 yards on that one. Showing you the 4-6 speed. Phoenix Ooh. Johnson. With a movement on the front side. Up front, get Coach the Roderick says he never ceases to amaze. He's had that kind of career. The senior, 5'8", 190. And Easley's got him another one. Yeah, Jordan Green that time again, that right tackle position. Washed it down and pull your backside guard and tackle. Phoenix Johnson getting it done when he gets his chance. We take a break. The electric Phoenix Johnson. Web City is rolling here in St. Louis, leading in the Class 4 title game, 35 to nothing. Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options, to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. The new maze record. Uh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. Web City is rolling in St. Louis, leading the Class 4 title game 35 to nothing. In 2011, Bomberitos added the fastest growing Ford store in Missouri, the Bomberito Ford Superstore in Hazelwood. Check it out. Bomberitos Automotive Group. Well, you know, the thing is, is if you talk about their offense, there's so many different weapons from the quarterback to the tailback to the wide receiver, but defensively here, Web City, they just don't allow anything to happen. And again, they've made this a one-dimensional team here to that last drive pretty much taking the run away from Elias. Now it's going to be a passing attack. Time for the D-line to tee off, and this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down to Corey. And talking a lot about the Roderick family. The Johnson family is pretty prolific in Web City lore as well. His older brother, Maddie Johnson, was a running back on this team and won state championships the last two years. Their dad is Big Cat Johnson. He's a basketball icon in Southwest Missouri. Big brother Maddie is attending Missouri State right now, playing for head coach Terry Allen. And uh, just a lot of good athletes in the Johnson family down there in Jasper County. Big uh, cat. They, I, I, if I could just say big cat a few uh, times. That's all I need to know. That <laughs> Here's Porter scrambling out of trouble. Floats one to the far sideline. His intended receiver there, Tannehill. Is out there in the coverage. One of the guys hardened. And again, I thought quarterback had a chance on this in terms of going down the field, the double move, but he felt the pressure that time. Is that Jose Spears working on that side? Again, 
course, the quarterback pulled the ball back down. Wyatt Porter, again, nowhere to go with football, second and ten. Harden got some help from Taylor Coleman as well in the coverage. Brings yeah. up second and ten at the 20-yard line. The safeties are wide. I think you got to go back to the middle of the field. Yeah, so that's, that's where the opening is right now. Porter, and he's got his receiver Tannehill, and right on him quickly is Todd Feller. And that's no gain on the play. Jose well, they're going to give him a yard. Yeah, Jose Spears, 48. I mean, he makes his presence known up front. Again, they're having to double and triple team this guy. Nice inside move that time by the defensive end, the senior defensive end. I mean, you got to make sure you keep two guys on him all the time, or else he's going to be in the quarterback's lap. Third down nine from the 21 for Helias. What's coming off the edge? They bring it this time. Incomplete. Looking for Bush Jost. And dropping back in the coverage from his linebacker position, Todd Fowler. Watch Jose Spears here at the left defensive end position. Look at the inside move. And again, quarterback, let me tell you something. He's feeling that, Neil. He hears the footsteps. He's going to get rid of that ball quickly. And again, that's what I like out of Jose Spears, the pass rushing ability on him. Inside and outside, good use of the hands. He has six sacks on the season, a three-year starter. And this one bounds over the top of Johnson. They pick it up. Did he touch it? I thought he might have. And they're going to oh, say that he did down. not. They're going to say it was down at the 48-yard line. I thought that one, it right through his hands. It did touch his shoulder. Let's see if it touched his hands. Initially, that's what I thought. But they're going to call it down right at that mark. This is to make the the field. Yeah, down at the 47. Watch it again, Neil. See if it touches any part of Phoenix Johnson. Can't tell from the front side of his shoulder from that angle. I just think it bounced and went right over the top. Well, that thing bounced right out of the screen. It That's did. a Super Bowl. 47-yard line for Webb City. Once again, great field position for the Cardinals. Oh, the ball's on the deck. Phoenix Johnson get it. Elias thinks they have it. Phoenix Johnson was the one who drove into that No, park. coming out of the pack, it's the Crusaders. The Shepherds. Nathan Shepherds. Hard to tell, got the jersey rolled up. Never got the ball from the center that time on that 52. Nice snap, Watkins, Seth Watkins. And I thought Phoenix Johnson had it. Yeah, I think it is Nathan Shepherds that fell on it. And it looked did. like he hurt his hand when he dove in there. The senior, 6'1", 182. I think he got hit by Phoenix Johnson's helmet. He went diving in for the football. Yeah, he, he went in hard to go after it. Quarterback ball never got up to quarterback's hands on the snap. And he's in some pain. A turnover collected there by the Crusaders. Bush Jost. He's Bush ahead for eight yards on first down. Man, I'll tell you what, he does a nice job of pressing the front side and his good, good vision and makes the cutback. Again, they're going to have to continue this. You know, I, I, I'm saying, you know what, throw away the passing game. You're going to have to continue to grind this out. You just cannot come out and go three and out against this defense. Offense for Webb City, too powerful. Second down two for the Crusaders. Bush Jost again. Stepping through there for a first down before he is tackled by Nate Brown. Just sidesteps people in the hole. Good balance. Very shifty runner. Yeah, as a coaching staff, you, you might have thought you had a dilemma there when four injured running backs go down and, and you just see this guy in the practice squad that's making everybody miss. Hey, let's go ahead and put him in. And 700 yards later, there he goes again. This time he's attacked at the line of scrimmage. A couple of guys coming up. Phoenix Johnson was one. And Matt also, Bill, is that 81? Alex Lane, I think. Yeah, yeah coming on the slant move on the inside. Just comes off the block that time. Again, nice job of separating from the blocker and making the play behind the line of scrimmage. Second down nine for the Crusaders. Ball at the 32-yard line of Webb City after the fumble recovery. And 
we'll check on Shepard to see if he's okay. And those inside linebackers are playing out nice and wide here again. You think he can come right back inside. Timeout on the sidelines here for Elias. And they're still working on Shepard's down there. Yeah, Nathan Shepard's after he fell on it. He's just going to say he's getting credit to the center McCollum, number 75. Said he's got that bandage left hand. He's wrapped up. I'm not sure if he has like a broken hand or a broken finger and everything, but tough when you're at that center position. I don't know if he can really grab with that hand or not. He's able to make all the snaps. Let's go get in on the block. Well, we've already crowned a few state champions. We did that yesterday. Eight man was Stanbury, Class 3, Maryville, Class 1, Perry, and then last night Kirkwood wins their first state title ever and were the fans excited? Oh, it absolutely. was late night with Baldy when we got out of here. Great crowd last night. And they night. were honking the horns. Oh, we were. walked I tell you what, you thought it was uh thought it was New Year's. There are the scores of those ball games. And congratulations to anybody that plays in a state title game. And of course the champions Penny. we just went through, Stanbury, Maryville, Penny. I was impressed with Penny down 14 to nothing in the fourth quarter, held the poise, and then they just became a machine. It was unstoppable. And then Kirkwood last night. Porter scrambles out of the pocket, trying to get the far sideline. But the chase was on and pulling him down by Fowler. the feet. Todd Fowler. Watch Fowler. You, you wonder why this defense is so effective. T speed on this. But watch Fowler at the linebacker position here, just sitting inside. And again, quarterback decides to roll out, trying to buy some time. But look at close Man, he just feet. closed on it. Wow. Third for down. him at tailback. Third down seven at the 30-yard line of Webb City. The give to Bush Jost. Exactly right. Oh, he's got a first down inside the 20 to the 15. Tell you what, you got to go with that. There's only four men in the box. The backers are walking outside to take away the throwing lane. Nice job by quarterback here. Just on the little zone read. The Bush shows there's no one there. You're getting double teams at the point of attack. Got to be an easy run, and there they take advantage of it. 15-yard gain, barely got him the football. It's kind of juggling it around. Exactly. There. Didn't really get the snap that time. As he got it to Bush Jost, and he picks up the first down on the 15-yard pickup. Bush Jost has time again. He's fine. Oh, he's got some, he hits the hole quickly. He's got some good vision, bounces around. Well, it would certainly mean a lot to the Crusaders to punch one into the end zone. It looks like Shepard's number 26 is yeah. hand. Looks like he might have broke his hand. Well, again, he's the young man that dove in there and yeah, recovered like that fumble. And obviously in yeah. some pain there and some issues, they're going to take him to the locker room. Yeah, usually when they have that ice on it, it's a little bit more than just a sprain. Try to keep that swelling down. And you know what, what we're hearing down there from Corey, who's right kind of in the mix? is that he does not want to leave the field until halftime. He wants to stay out there with his guys. Let's we'll see if they can punch one in here. Okay, this defensive line here for the Cardinals, they constantly rotate their people every time, keeping them fresh up front so they can attack the ball. 108 to go in the first half. It would mean a lot to the Crusaders to get one in, and there's a completed pass. It goes to Tannehill at the 10-yard line. And he stopped there by Harden. And a nice uh, inside linebacker blitz that time by the Cardinals. Good pickup. Quarterback had time. Delivered again on the route. A little hitch route that time on the outside. To Ryan Tannehill. Second down five at the 10. Time winding. The quarter. And that one's caught by Henches. He's driven out, but the clock will roll. Yeah. Two yards short of the first end. Yeah, he had to go to Henches underneath that time because they had Ryan Tannehill bracketed in the end zone. Couldn't go there with the football. So quarterback had to go with the underneath route. Actually, third down and three at the eight-yard line. Look at timeout again. Yeah, another timeout taken by Elias. Yeah, one time you're down in the red zone. Got to come away with some type of points. Field goal just isn't going to be enough right now. Well, Coach Pitts and the staff just excited about being in this title game after they won six in a row to make it here. Really excited about being here at the Dome. It means so much to the parents and the players to see the success that they've had for all that they've been asked to do by the coaching staff. And that's always fun to be able to make it here and play in that state title game. 
and, and go up against the Web City powerhouse. And I asked Coach about you know some of the keys to this game, and he said, without a doubt, John Roderick is the best throwing quarterback that Web City has ever had, and you can see it. And again, it makes it dif so difficult defensively because he can put the ball down the field, so those safeties have, have to be able to respect that deep throwing ability of his. So now you can't get involved in the running game. Third down three with 28 seconds left. Flips to the right here. If they come back inside, the safeties are walked out wide. McCurran in the backfield with Porter. Porter going to Tannehill down to the three-yard line. He's tackled there by 29 Humphrey. Phoenix Johnson is also in on that play outside, too. They pick up the first down. The clock will roll when they get to the line of scrimmage. And they spike Fight. it. Only one second went off the clock. 21 left I don't know here if, in the first half. I don't know if we could take a look at it again. That was a weak spike. <laughs> that guy sit down. He got to fire that football. He kind of just laid it down. <laughs> That's the only part I see about why well, it's about right efficiency, now. isn't it? <laughs> He's got to work on his spike. I'm going to have to get you out with a math equation <laughs> to see what gets it to the ground more quickly. The rearing back and hammering it to the turf or <laughs> softly getting it down. What stops the clock, the clock more quickly? I don't know. We'll have to figure that out at halftime. I'm we'll sure you're going to be equations. all over that. There's Porter. Got his receiver. Touchdown. Mm -hmm. Crusaders, Woodruff. Anthony Woodruff. Underneath. Had the clear out route right on the top. Is that Tannehill driving into the end zone? Woodruff comes underneath on the out. Nice job by quarterback. He gets time in the pocket. Just slides to his left a little bit. There's Woodruff underneath. And that's that great. That was Tannehill. Drove coverage back. Now Woodruff underneath. Able to create separation. Touchdown on the play. That is the 11th touchdown of the season for Woodruff. Good shot by quarterback. And on to try the extra point, Shumagala. Shumagala. Woodruff, Anthony Woodruff. Nice job on the route that time. Working that combination route on the left side. Tannehill on the outside that time. Driving into the corner. Kind of pulled coverage. You have a penalty on the play. See what the flag is, Neil. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Against the defense, 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Tries good. Well, that means a lot to the Crusaders to get on the scoreboard right before half here. Good job in terms up front and again delivering the ball. And that was Anthony again, Ryan Tannehill driving off deep into the corner. And that allows you underneath route now. Anthony Woodruff, when he separates, giving a good throwing lane to his quarterback. Quarterback puts the ball right on the money. Touchdown on the play. And after Woodridge, Woodruff catches the touchdown pass, he'll kick it off now. And Porter throws the touchdown pass. His 25th TD pass of the season. Remember coming in here, Woodruff, 48 catches. 58 catches for Disler. I mean, these guys can sling it around the yard. And against the zone defense in that first drive, they were effective throwing that ball. They've, if those safeties are going to play outside the hash marks, go ahead and drive into the middle to the post or maybe to the corners. That's where the holes are right now, that defense. But haven't had enough effectiveness with throwing that ball. Also, haven't been really run the ball as well to really just drive right now. But again, got to have a better balance in offense. They go for the onside kick. They Did they it. get it? Yes. Elias has the football. Woodruff on the kick. That was Woodruff on the kickoff. Well, they're still conferring. They haven't really given us a signal yet. Certainly the Crusaders think they have it. Woodruff comes across on the kick. Okay, yeah, he just followed it on himself. The kicking team, the 36-yard line, the first down. They did get it. Web City. Got to do some things. He means Helias. First down, Helias, right? Or did he say he touched it? I'm confused now. He after said, he said Web he City, because he signaled first down going the other way wait, for the Crusaders. I thought he said that it was Helias recovered the football, the kicking team. Or did he, or did he say it was touched before? 
I'm not exactly sure the call on the field. I, I think that's things. what I think that's what he said. Okay. Well, either way, Web City's got the football. Yeah. So well, some and somebody it. signaled going the other way. way too. So anyway, Here let's let's sort it out. Helias has now run out on defense. The offense of Web City's out there. They have the football, and it's at the 36-yard line. And here we have another flag on the play. Was something said? Sideline. Get the coaching staff from Helias, maybe, out in the field. Dead ball. Sideline warning against Helias. Yep. First Coaches warning of the, the half. Field. Well, I don't think they knew who was on the field, the defense or the offense. Yeah, it's kind of hard to figure out. What I, I, again, this came out on the field, assistant coaches, and they were just trying to get the Trying to figure out, okay, which team am I sending out to? Did we recover or not? Because he oh, saw two things. You see that Elias had the football, but they said they didn't. 35 to 7, Webb City on top. First and 10 with 17 seconds left. Wow. And Cooper Smith. <laughs> oh, Jordan Green, the left tackle, strong tackle. Oh, my. <laughs> they don't stand a chance up front with him blocking. Wow, he just rolled graded people. 35 to 7 at the half. Webb City Roll. looking to defend their state championship. The Crusaders, though, get one on the board right before halftime. And that should be big as they head to the locker room and, and know that they can move the football a little bit. Oh, exactly. And again, for Elias, getting those points on the board. And it kind of got set up because they got some of the running attacks going. And again, if Webb City's going to walk their backers out to take away the throwing lanes to the flat, you got to be able to pound that ball in the middle. Until that drive, they really didn't take advantage of it. They got Bush Jost going on a few of those runs. Going to have to do some of that in the second half. Let's go down to Corey. Thanks, guys. I'm down here on the field with Web City coach John Roderick. Coach, good first half for your ball club. Talk a little bit about the offense. John running, running and throwing the ball extremely well in the first half. Well, you know, in our in our offense, sometimes it's dictated by the defense and how they how they how they react defensively. You know, in our option game, and uh, he's just pulled the ball and, and made some good decisions. Had a couple, you know, cut the ball back behind the grain a little bit. I think they're, you know, they're probably just leaving him, you know, leaving him open to run, and he's certainly taking advantage of it. Uh, you know, we hate that last snap. We had a mishandle there between the snap and, you know, allowed him to get down there and score. But, uh, you know, really pleased with our guys up front doing a great job. Our backs are running hard, hitting the whole line of scrimmage quickly. And, you know, defensively, you know, doing a great job. But that, that, one, that last one was on the offense for turning the ball over like that. Talk a little bit. Your linebackers playing extremely well today in the middle. Well, you know, they're two guys that uh, – our, our experienced guys are returning starters from last year, and they're not very big, you know, but I tell you what, I love them to death. They play hard, play the game the way it's supposed to be played. Thanks, Coach. Best of luck in the second half. Thank you. Guys, also I want to mention Nathan Shepard's the linebacker for Jeff City, Helias. He ended up with a dislocated thumb, but it is severely dislocated. Ooh. He'll be leaving and going to the hospital here at halftime. Oh, All right, like thanks, Cardi. Yeah, Corey, thanks for that. It you don't want to hear that. That no. was a hustle play, too. I think he hit Phoenix Johnson's yeah. helmet. Right Diving in to get the ball. ball. We'll take a break. Web City on top, 35-7. to 7. Show Me Bowl 2012. Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around. That's why we present people with options, to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. Hey. The new maze record. Oh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. Boo! <laughs> hey, hey, where are you going? Can't get by me. I'm number one in this class. I rule this lab. I'm number one. Hey, hey, I don't think so. Yes! Weather! I am a king! Woo! You wouldn't do it there. Woo! So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. What? Jerk.
Show Me Bowl 2012 is brought to you by Farmers Insurance and by the Bomberito Automotive Group. And welcome back to the Dome in St. Louis. Show Me Bowl 2012, Web City on top at halftime here in Class 4, the title game, 35 to 7 after jumping out to a 35 to nothing lead. And this is number five as far as state titles are going right now, Baldy. We had four yesterday that we crowned. You go back all the way to the eight-man game that started, what was it, 9.30 in the morning? We got that cranked up. And they took care of business, didn't they, North Andrew? And it's actually Stanbury yeah. that took care of business, so that's backwards. 56-38, Stanbury wins it. Penny, the state titleist in Class 1. Maryville won it in Class 3. And then Kirkwood last night, that was a really more closely a contested game. game than the score. They broke loose late. Right and court, man, yep. the community of Kirkwood was really pumped up after that win. Look at some of the highlights yesterday in that class one game from Penny, a game you had a chance to do. A lot of offense in this thing. Yeah, just coming out, Wood immediately got going and said they got a 14 point lead on that clump on their reception on that touchdown. And and this is Valley about, Center right here. Yeah, and Val on this one. And how about Tyler Fallon running the football? Nice job on his part. And as I said, Penny was down. But then they got Derek and Devin Hughes running the football. Just got some good things. Here's Fallon again showing some good balance, cutback ability. And again, you thought maybe Val Cap would get it done, but Penny's so powerful. And how about this guy over screen, 29. He was the difference. He had so many big plays in the game, you know, melted down a few calculators. But Devin Hughes, Derek Hughes, I'll tell you what, the Hughes family, they are huge running the football. And then how about this one? Eight missed tackles on this one. Had Overstreet stopped on the play, but still able to find a way to go into the end zone for a touchdown. Penny just simply outrageous yesterday on offense, throwing and running the football. And Penny won at 60 to 34 over Valley Catholic in Class One. Here's Class Three, the Spook Hounds of Maryville. Yeah, they did. And how about this guy, Zeke? I tell you what, can't wait to see him do it next year at Ohio State. And Neil, I think he's the best I've seen so far this weekend running the football. And McMahon, we're going to see a lot of him only as a sophomore. You can see, we see what speed does. Makes the coach look real smart every time, no matter what play you have. He was simply outrageous. So many records set in this game in terms of rushing the football. Derek Steen's also, too, running the ball. And then here's oh. Preston. How about the return game? Man. And look at the vision on this guy, Zeke. You know, he just cuts back against the rain at any time, just glides down the field. And then how about Zeke running Zeke Elliott, who we're talking about. Zeke Elliott, I'll tell you what, that's the way you finish right there, bringing it across the goal line. Wrap your hands around that football. He plays for John Burroughs. Maryville, though, won the title, Class 3. Here's the Kirkwood game. They went up top, and this pass goes from Bishop to Benson for 73. That got the scoring going for the yeah, Pioneers. Yeah, play action at the beginning of the game hurt him really well. Porter Sage didn't stand a chance defensively, and then here's Bishop to Bishop. Talk about getting checkmate. They got it done yesterday offensively here, and then the field goal right at the end of the half. He made it 17 to nothing. You thought, all right, Kirkwood's going to take care of it, but then Porter Sage and Maui. How about that run down to the goal line? He's got Porto Sage right now. You can feel things beginning to turn. But Jordan Bishop put together a great drive and then the throw to the outside to Richie, number three. Jordan Bishop so good. And then how about them? Stephen McBee struggled. And here's the interception in the fourth yeah, quarter. Eric Phillips. Yeah, Phillips on the interception that time. And folks, let me tell you something. Stephen McBee at the quarterback threw the ball really well. They just didn't catch the ball in the game, and that was the difference and the reason why they didn't win. And Kirkwood wins their first title. They're in Class 5. We had a couple more games coming up today. This is the Class 2 game, Lamar and Blair Oaks. That'll be right after this one. And then the nightcap, Class 6, Francis Howell and Blue Springs going at it at 5.30 here in the Dome. Always a fun weekend. A great weekend. State Championship Football in St. Louis here in the Dome. Show me Show Bowl. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go. One hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burnt. That's it. You're not going to come to my house and tell me how to cook a ham. Yeah, is, I don't really you wouldn't do it there. You gotta be crazy. So don't do it here. 
of sportsmanship. It's up to you. Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options, to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. Hey. That's a new maze record. Uh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. Welcome back to the Dome here in St. Louis. It's Webb City on top at halftime in Class 4 action. State title game 35-7 to on top. The Cardinals as they try to defend their state title. They're doing a pretty good job of that right now. And John Roderick, what a first half he had. Oh, I'll tell you what, the quarterback position during the stand-up, we said that he was the difference. They're running the option, has made some great reads. We've had a chance to show some of his fundamentals in that option. Great feet. Good vision, and again, now here throwing the football, rolling to his left, decides he can't throw the ball. Now does a little dancing in the open field, again, scores another touchdown. What an afternoon on his part, and again, now you've got a quarterback who's going to run the option also, too, with the throwing. What do you do defensively? Well, you better get an extra guy in the field to stop number 19, or else you're not going to have a chance to win this game. He ran for three, passed for one, and that defense has been tough as well for this Cardinal team. Yeah, just led by Casey Craig at the nose tackle. I thought he's done really good, but how about the linebacker play by Humphreys, also two in the backfield. Number 40, also two in that play. Fowler at the linebacker position. We've been talking about the defense men, Jose Spear. They've been able to shut down the run. They've been overall here, except for the one turnover. They've been just dynamic in terms of coming up and able to create havoc. Here we have the block on the play on that Blocked by, by Nate Big Brown. Brown. Yeah, nice Picked job. Picked up by Mark Austin White. White. They're on the return. And they've had sensational field position all the time. But defensively, those front three for the defense here for Webb City, they've commanded the line of scrimmage. And overall here, so far, Elias has not been able to establish a run. You become one-dimensional against that defense, it's all over with. And Webb City leads it here in the Class 4 state title game in the Show Me Bowl, 35-7. You're watching Fox Sports Midwest. Welcome back to the Dome Show Me Bowl. This is the Class 4 title game in Webb City at halftime on top, trying to defend their state title, leading it 35-7 over Helias. And hi again, everybody. Neil Harwell and Rich Baldinger here with you at halftime. And, Baldy, this Webb City team, as advertised, they've won 44 games in a row, yep. 90 regular season games in a row. I'm going to let Corey go through all the numbers later I down on the side. I those numbers. It's mind-boggling. It is. But they're showing why they're so tough here in the first half. Yeah, it started on the offensive side of the ball. It starts at that quarterback position, John Roderick. And, again, it would, to me, when you can find a quarterback that can throw like he can, not only in the pocket but outside the pocket, but also run the option, that's the athlete he is. That's also the smarts that he has because it's two different types of quarterback completely going from a throwing game to an option game he's able to do that and with his accuracy throwing the football I don't really know how you stop this defense right now he said 
except maybe put an extra guy on the field. And the precision yep. that they run that offense with, that veer option, and now you put that wrinkle in with Roderick able to throw the ball yep. so well, it, it's tough to stop. Well, and again, you got guys up front like Jordan Green at the strong tackle, their ability just to get movement at the point of attack, and you can now run the counter play. There's so many options within that option running game, complement it with the passing game. If you don't do your keys right and stay with your person, guess what? You're going to get beaten. That's what happened in the first half for Elias. Now the Crusaders got a score right before half. That yep. has to give them a little bit of a boost. What do you look for out of them here in the second half? Well, finally in that drive, they started winning at the point of attack. Listen, up, up, up front for Webb City, they've only played with three men up front. And if you can't, even with only four men in the box for defensively for Webb City, or even five, if you can't get some type of running game going, which they finally did with yeah, Bruce Jones, yeah, huh? when he finally got something going, now at least you can put that defense back on the heels. You have to make them at least count for the running game. If not, now linebackers get in the throwing lane. They begin to disguise coverage. Defensive linemen can just tee off and come after you. So better on that point. That's why now coming to the second half, you can't panic. But you got to have a balance in that offense, and it starts with doing something in that running game. They did in the last drive. Let's see if they can do it in the second And that half. led to the touchdown, exactly. the three-yard pass that Helias got in the end zone to come up with the seven points in the first half. It's 35-7 to seven here at halftime. Webb City on top in the Class 4 state title game. We'll take another break here at halftime. You're watching the Show Me Bowl from the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. Thank you. Can I help you today? Uh, no thanks. I'm just looking. Oh, this is cute. Ahem. <clears throat> <laughs> you wouldn't do it there. So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Like they're the fashion police. <laughs> Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options, to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. Hey. The new maze record. Uh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba -da, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. Web City on top at halftime, 35 to seven in the Class Four state title game. We look at the autumn, the Bomberito Automotive game summary, and those statistics. Elias started to run the ball a little bit better there yep. toward the end of the first half, and they punched one in for the touchdown. But man, the rushing total for Web City, Baldy. I want you to look at that last line down there. Average yards per play, 12.6. Lights out. But again, also, too, Elias had good field position on that one. They've started on their own 20 yard line every single drive. They got the ball in that turnover in good field position, able to score. So, again, with easily kicking the ball, makes it a long field. So, that's why offensively, you've got to have some balance so you can sustain your drives. Game summary brought to you by the Bomberito Automotive Group. And we'll take another break. We are at halftime in Web City on top 35 to 7 in the Class 4 title game. Show Me Bowl 2012. Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. Hey. The new maze record. Uh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba -da, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS.
Welcome back to the Dome in St. Louis. Webb City on top in the Class 4 title game. They lead it 35 to 7 over Helias as they punched in a touchdown right before halftime. Webb City had vaulted out to that 35 to nothing lead behind their quarterback, John Roderick. Let's go down to Corey. Thanks, Neil. We had a chance to talk to Coach Phil Pitts of Helias in the tunnel before they came back out to start the second half. We asked him what they saw at the end of the first half that they could improve on here in the second. He said, first of all, running the ball is key. They've got to run the ball more to open up the passing attack. But more important than that, his message to the team at halftime was to win the third quarter. There's no magic bullet. There's no 30-point play to erase the deficit. Take it one play at a time and win the third quarter guys yep well we would, that'd be oh. some good advice right yeah, you gotta do but again it, it, it can, you're gonna have to have a balance in the offense you gotta have a sustained drive you know you're gonna probably have to go a long way but again you can't go three and out you can't give Webb City the ball back at great field position midfield I think Webb City started on what, what every drive basically from about midfield against such a powerful offense John Roderick at the quarterback position so Let's see what they do here in second half. And you talk about Coach Pitts yep. at Helias. His mentors, Ray Henches, Chris Henches, that have both coached here. Gary and, they, and they have Hale Henches now on the team as you go through their genealogy. And then he played at Missouri for Gary Pinkle, talking about Helias coach Phil Pitts. Yeah. What did he say about Gary Pinkle? Attention to detail. Yeah, that's, that's what he learned defensively what they have to do here in the second half because against that option they weren't in the right place in the first half and it cost them on some big plays. So those are some of the mentors for Coach Pitts. You go back to Roderick, Coach Roderick at Webb City, Jerry Keel, Tim Beck he had at Pitt State. How about Gary Patterson? I mean those are some guys that he's had that have mentored him that he mentioned. You know and these two guys great coaches in their own right. And they're mentoring somebody right now, too. Yeah, a lot of all these kids on both sides, number one, and the most important thing, we've we'll talked about everything. Again, very impressed with John Roderick. And, you know, I can't overemphasize how hard that is. We'll talk about it after the kick here by Woodruff. And this one dies at the one-yard line, and it's finally picked up and brought out to the 16. And it's picked up there by Mikel Harbin. <laughs> I'm glad he picked it up. That ball's live. He's sitting there thinking it's a punt and it's going to die in the one yard line. No, sir, you got to go with it. I was trying to figure out now, is he on the receiving team or the kick team? And he's ready to down it. Again, just take a look at it. He's sitting there now watching, thinks that, all right, balls is going to be down. And he thought it went over the goal line in high school, would be automatically a touchback. But he decides to pick but, it up. I'll tell you what, when he picked it up, that he was scooted. a first. It was a first. He's thinking, uh-oh, <laughs> coach is going to get me yeah, here. And mark him at the 17. <laughs> they give us to Johnson, and they stuff him up. They dropped the point of attack that time. One inside the defensive tackle position. Whole crew in there to blow that one up. One of them, Brody Bush Jost the cousin of Garrett up front. They're better in terms of using his hands. And, you know, Neil, as we talk about John Roderick, we've talked about him throwing the ball and also running the option. There, it, it is such a different dynamic in terms of all the footwork you have to do and your reads and everything. So that's why I like to compliment the young man for what I've seen to be able to balance between running both these styles of offense. Two yards on that play. Bring up second down, eight. Quick trap. Here's Phoenix Johnson. Wow. Oh, he's got a first Where down. Oh, he put it on Austin. spin cycle, but forgot the football. And I think they know they recovered it. It might be 86 Strasser. Cooper Strasser that fell on it. Watch the quick trap here on this play. Initially, it opens up nicely. Left guard's going to pull on this one. Quick trap on that one there. Nice job. It was at 57. Perez. And then here coming down and. There's the spin move, loses the ball. Is that Duden half Hafer? Duden Hafer. Yeah, got the strip. Boy, Helias had a bunch of guys around the football. You thought maybe they were going to come away, but sneaking in there is Strasser, and this one is complete on first down. Slaughter. Cole Slaughter's got another one. He's caught a touchdown pass already today. Yeah, he did. You were right. Again, they lined up as a wide receiver in the slot that time. 
his ability to run routes. A good athlete, not only as a blocker, as a tight end, but also now. That's why they said, you know what? Good hands, runs good routes. Let's make him a wide receiver also. Second down one on that pickup of nine. Ball marked at midfield. He's lined up in the slot on the left side again. Roderick wow, keeps it, now pitches it back to Johnson. Downfield, nice. Inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Quick feet, good read by the quarterback that time, going through all three aspects. Fake the dive, quarterback sees that he has to keep it, and then decides on the pitch. Take a look at it, working down the line, pulls it, now sees it gets taken by the linebacker. There's the pitch outside the Phoenix, the slot, the stock block outside by Logan Williams. Option looks good, first down on the play. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. Schulte came over to make the stop. Good quick read by the quarterback, John Rodder at that time, making the pitch. Off to the races, the racehorses. Cooper Smith, Schulte has him and throws him backward. He does. Jordan Green, the left tackle. Watching him just all afternoon, the movement he gets, he just collapses the whole side. He looks like a road grader. He's like a D9 bulldozer. And Schulte get losing part of his jersey already. He doesn't care, man. That guy, they, he can call him a ball hawk. That's an understatement with over 200 tackles this season. A lot of FCS type schools, Division II schools looking at him. Outstanding career for the Crusaders. 6'1", 227, Justice Schulte to throw it, Roderick. That's a pressure on him this time. How about Roderick holding on? Somehow the comes out of there for a gain of about three. Blake Wilbur's in there. I think Hinch is also was in there, 83. This is a good one. Yeah, he is. And again, finally got some pressure that time. John Roderick, most of the time, has been able to stand in the pocket and deliver the ball down the field. And Coach Pitts said Hinches is their best defensive lineman, just a sophomore. Let's look at the bounce by Cooper Smith for the first down, Neil. We've seen some efficient running. Watch Cooper Smith here. He's the fullback now. He's always going to line up to the tight end side. Watch him take it here. There's the read, and then the bounce. Nice block by your center that time, 51. Mason Kent, that's the way to finish, young man. Takes it to the defensive player somewhere else. Running back enjoys it, first down on the play. And time is grinding off Ooh. that clock. It is grinding On right this now. drive by Webb City that started at their 17. First and 10 for the Cardinals. And mark it at the 27 of the Crusaders. Cooper Smith. How about Phoenix Johnson on the block? And staying with it, Justice Schulte to bring him down. Watch Phoenix And then he Johnson. picks him up. Uh, you like it. I tell you what, you like the way they compliment each other. Watch Phoenix Johnson here again on the lead. Talk about getting it done. Gets a flat back on the play. Cooper Smith just dancing on the outside. It takes four or five guys to bring him down. Well, one of them was Schulte, and he threw him backwards. <laughs> Gain of only two on that play. Second down and eight at the 25-yard line. That's just wearing that defense, pounding on him, body blows. And up the gut they go with Cooper Smith inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Taking care of the nose tackle on this 30 front. In this odd front right now, getting some movement. Shane Colonius in there on the stop for Helias. And they're really doing a nice job in the combo blocks and everything. Get some movement, sustaining their blocks. That's why the dive read was given that time. You never wrong the quarterback, as I said, to go ahead and give the dive. Makes everybody have to. Third down and short. Physical game. Third and two at the 18. Roderick on the keeper. 
He's got the first down, and he's down to the six-yard line. I tell you, such good acceleration on his part. Reads the defense so well on this. Watch him miss. Again, works down the line. See his eyes immediately go to his target. There's the key, and now able to get back up field. Again, that stutter step on his part and the acceleration glides so smooth. But again, I like the way his head and his eyes go right to his target so he knows whether he has to give or pull on it. And that's a gain of 12 to pick up the first down. And it's first and goal at the six for the Cardinals of Webb City. Play action, Roderick. Dumps it off. Out of the backfield, Cooper Smith. And they pound him just short of the goal line. Coming over there to make the hit, Cole Disler. And I'll tell you what, it, it, John Roderick, I mean, throwing on the move here. Yeah, he has done a lot of work in the offseason. Watch him get outside the pocket here. And again, see where he holds the football? I don't know if we'll take a look at that again. He holds it right above his shoulder. So he, when he releases it, he's got nice accuracy on the football, and there's some velocity on it also, too. Good mechanics. At the one-yard line, second and goal for Webb City. Oh, Cooper Smith. White wave going forward. And no signal. I thought he was in. Just short. And you can hear him saying he never got in. Cooper Smith has scored 18 touchdowns, or 17 touchdowns coming in on the season. That'll bring up third down goal from the one. And when they're in that squat position like that, the reason why they, they both those tailbacks, fullback and tailback are in that real squat position, you know, it's, it's because it gives them a better vision of what's happening inside on that. So whether they are going to get the handoff or not, get a better vision of that defensive tackle. It's most likely the quarterback's reading in terms of whether they hand off or not. Oh, Cooper Smith walks into the end zone. Touchdown. They took almost, well, what, five and a half minutes, minutes off the clock on that drive that started at their own 17, and this is too easy. Yeah, Mason Kent led by their center in the middle there. Nice job on his part getting to the second level. That's just too easy. Also 261, Coronico, the right guard position, talking about also Jordan Green, Seth Watkins, everyone getting it done. Easily. And it's 42 to 7. Webb City is rolling in the Class 4 state title game in St. Louis. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go. One hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burnt. That's it. You're not going to come to my house and tell me how to cook a hamburger. Yeah, I don't really you, you wouldn't do it there. you got to be crazy. So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Welcome back to the Class 4 title game. And it's Webb City on top, 42 to 7 here in the third quarter. Are you saving as much as you could on insurance? See how your knowledgeable local farmer's agent can save you money. Call 1-800-FARMERS or visit farmers.com. We are insurance. We are farmers. 
And the Web City faithful that follow their team all over the place and have seen the string of wins working on number 45 today in a row. State titles 10 times when you go back. 1989, 92, 93, 97, 2000, 01, 06, 08, 20, 2010, 2011. And they're working on it here in 2012. 12. Hey, could this be news? Nope. I thought no. maybe a returnable ball here Impossible. today. Impossible. But nope, Easley has now put, is that seven of them in the end zone? Seven of them, you're exactly right, in the end zone. And again, it just makes it offensively. You know, you've got to go 80 yards. You've been struggling here in terms of really getting the balance. And defensively, you haven't been able to stop Web City all day. So right now, got to kind of come out, maybe get some big chunk plays. Helias has had only one drive that did not start at their own 20. And that drive after the turnover. Yes. Resulted in a touchdown. And we have to give our stats guy, Terry Black, some props, man. He's just delivering over here. <laughs> right? I'll tell you, if he can keep up with this, with the stats, especially after yesterday, I with, thought maybe we were going to lose a couple stats guys. Gonna walk out with here. all these football games and all these stats, yeah, we had a couple of them that tested the calculators. Or I should say his iPad up here. Let's get us into the right decade, Baldy, with our technology. Here we go. There's a first down for Helias. Make something happen. Bush Jost on the carry. He had 77 yards in the first half they when did. they got him rolling that running game, and they took it right down after the turnover. Now it's just difficult. You, yeah, if you could have made the stop, if you make the stop, then you come out. But now, he is, he's, as you said, down 42 to 7. Now it's all about big chunk plays. You got to try to throw the ball down the field. You got to injure an official over on the sidelines, Neil. Yeah. Let's go, Sidelines! Now they attend to him on the far sideline, right by the Ooh. first down marker. And he's in some pain. And going for the Let's shoe he there. His ankle. That's what it looks like they're working on. And I did not see that happen. Just. No, it. The, I, I can't tell if he's holding his knee or that left ankle. It looks like he's on his right side. Well, it could be. Is he working on his Achilles down there? Is he just back up again? Turf monster got him. Mm. He's, yeah, he, he, I know he's not going to be able to finish. <laughs> I think it is his ankle, his left ankle. They're going to head, go ahead and take one of the uh, officials from working on the chain gain. Now it goes from the chain yeah. gain out onto the field. Well, obviously couldn't put any pressure at all on it. Nathan Shepers that fell on that football to recover the fumble, they had to take him away with a severely dislocated thumb. As Corey told us, yep. they had to take him to the hospital. Never been a fan of the turf, Neil. My days down in playing where we had to go to the Houston Astrodome and there were so many dead spots. They had like wood underneath the turf. You'd be running and just wipe out and along the sidelines they had in the middle of the field with the pitcher's mound. But Baldy, was. they've made some advances here in the turf. You're going back to the nah, Astrodome you, and stuff. They just say you turf. You were playing on nightmare. concrete and if wood on underneath there. But listen, when, they, when, you, when you could play on the natural turf, you could put some mud in the shoes of the defensive linemen and <laughs> slow them up a little bit. <laughs> Now it's coming out. The Crusaders with Porter being chased again, and he just has to throw it away. And he nearly didn't get it to the sideline. Phoenix Johnson was on the close. How about Jose Spear again? I mean, he maybe not had the sack, but all afternoon so far, he has been around the quarterback. Nice job on his part on the outside rush that time. Bringing the pressure, forcing the quarterback to have to make the perfect throw. And look into those eyes, man. Oh, I tell you what, he's got some intensity, doesn't he? Three-year starter. Got a tight end next to him every time. Bush Jost across the 35 to the 37-yard line on second down. Make sure you go to bomberito.com and like us on Facebook for your chance to win a $100 QT gift card or a $100 gift certificate to any of the famous Michael Del Pietro restaurants. Third down. 3.28 left here in the third quarter. Third down six from the 37 for the Crusaders. 
with Bush Jost in motion. Porter, intended receiver Tannehill in the coverage, Harbin, or Keontae Harden, I should say. And also two that time on that. Nice job with number 81 on the rush, but again, protection, you've got to slide towards every time. Joe, Mr. Spears, they got to put three blockers on him, puts everybody else in one on one. Able then to get, get pressure on the quarterback, not allowing anything to take place down the field. And, and the clock stack. rolling in this game, 42-30, yeah. or 42-7, uh, to 7, so 35-point lead. And this one is kicked back deep and taken in by yeah, John. Phoenix Johnson. Man, he, do some, he works on the spin move, doesn't he? I mean, I got dizzy on that one. He won't go down. How about the leg strength on his part? Finally at the 44, he is gang tackled and then helps people up after it. Yeah, he does. We'll take a break. The Cardinals of Webb City on top in the Class 4 game, 42 to 7. Thank you. Can I help you today? Uh, no thanks. I'm just looking. Oh, this is cute. <clears throat> so? You wouldn't no do it there. Oh. So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Like they're the fashion police. <laughs> Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options. To help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there? The new maze record. Uh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. Boo! <laughs> hey, hey, where are you going? Can't get by me. I'm number one in this class. I rule this lab. I'm number one. Hey, hey, I don't think so. Yes! Weather! I am a king! Woo! You wouldn't do it there. Woo! So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. What? Jerk. Welcome back to the Show Me Bowl 2012, Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. Wow, they got the electricity working over there with their signage. They have been electric today, haven't they? They haven't short-circuited yet. 42 points. I would say that's the ability to put some points on the board. Is what, what's their average points in the year? 45? They're a little bit behind that right now? Yeah, almost 46 a game. Yeah, it's not too good of a game for them. Let's see what they can do here. Yeah, Let's the see. average score about 46 <laughs> to 8. And they can strike quick for Webb City on the season. And they can also just grind you out. This is Cooper Smith. The tackle is made by Colonius. Let's go down to Corey. Gentlemen, I ran over to the far side of the field to take a look at uh, the official that went down. And you hate to see one of these young men go down. You hate to see the officials go down as well. They deserve to be here. Yep. He may have a torn calf muscle. They're going to get him back in the training room and take a look at him. But Misha wanted to point out, you see all the chain gang out here. Every single one of those men is an official. So if one goes down, there are plenty to back him up, fellas. Yeah, thanks, Corey. And that's what Baldy pointed out. Yep. You know, it, it's the way they do that. Next man up. And I thought he was working his calf or his Achilles, Achilles back yeah. there. And, and just the way he was moving. And, well, I hope he's okay. Absolutely. And the pitch back. This is Phoenix Johnson. Dragged down by Schulte. Yeah, the fundamentals of this option. Talk about the execution. Pitch man that time. Again, Phoenix Johnson. Always in proper placement with this quarterback. And again, you see Roderick, the quarterback, press that line of scrimmage. Make the defensive person commit to you. Now when you make that pitch, your eyes follow the ball to the pitch man. It's pretty first down on the play. First down on the play. How about the motor on Schulte, though? Oh, he's been flying I mean, he is field. flying. Doesn't matter. Downfield, up at the line of scrimmage, whatever. 35 for Elias, the Crusaders. 
their all-time leading tackler. There he is. We'll see him playing somewhere else. I would think so. Got a nice bonus. Active on the field. Cooper Smith on first down. He's down to the 31. And he is tackled that time by 57, Blake Wilbers. I tell you, it's a battle in the middle. Idaho. He's been going after Mason Kent at the time and a little slugfest going on in between tackles. Did he just take his offensive line out to the cheers of the crowd? I think so. Now, how do you like that as a former offensive <laughs> line? Did that ever happen to you? No. No, it never that's did. That's pretty cool. No. I mean, that's giving those guys up front some recognition, right, at the end of the quarter? We'll take a break. Webb City on top, 42 to seven in the class four title game. The Show Me Bowl 2012, Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. Show Me Bowl 2012 is brought to you by Farmers Insurance and by the Bomberito Automotive Group. Beautiful day in St. Louis, the Class 4 State Championship game. One quarter to play, Webb City on top 42 to 7, trying to become state champions again for the 11th time. This would be their third in a row. Fourth in the last five years. Could keep going with these numbers. The Cardinals tradition continues. That's Schulte in on the tackle. Phoenix Johnson on the carry. Oh yeah, yeah just, just look for 35. Five. How many tackles does he have for today? Can you count that high? <laughs> He's been the one guy that's been a player. Tough in this offense though. No matter what the defense gives you, there's always an answer out of this option. And people in proper place all the time for Webb City. Take the wholesale substitution taking place. Cooper Smith's going now out. taking the ball handlers out of there. I, I mean, I still go back to the linemen, Baldy. And it, you, so Marty Schottenheimer <laughs> never pulled the offensive <laughs> oh. line to the cheers for Rich Baldinger as he left yeah, the field. I didn't get a lot of cheers. I got a lot of some boos along the way and a few <laughs> yellow flags also, too. <laughs> Uh, third down and one. And they pick up the first down, it looks like, inside the 30-yard line. And let's go down to Corey. We've been teasing those numbers, and I know you got a head full of them down there. Corey. We are swimming in numbers. Let's just start with 44. It's 44 straight wins for the Cardinals. The number 90 straight Missouri State regular season wins. 15 straight Misha playoff wins. Five COC championships. 64 is the number of consecutive conference games they've won. And finally, 604, the total number of program wins. That puts them on the Mount Rushmore of high school football teams in Missouri with Jeff City, Rockhurst, Webster Groves, Chillicothe, and Sykeston, guys. 
Yeah, no question. You were just the guy to go through all that, Corey. I didn't want Baldy's head to explode up here. <laughs> I got confused after the second one. It sounds like domination to me. Well, and they've gotten their starting yep. guys out of the ball game, and kind of cool to see Coach Roderick in a hug with his son, you know, exactly. as a senior here. Seeing, see, Dad, we should have been throwing the ball football a lot sooner. <laughs> So a bunch of new guys in there for Webb City. And the handoff this time goes to Baldassari, Kyle Baldassari. Quarterback in there is Mason Williams. That's Baldassari right there. You just talk about with Coach Roderick, how it just starts at the, you know, in town with the youth leagues, learning about the offense, going to all the different camps, understanding what you have to do, what are going to be the expectations when you get older, what's playing this offense. Oh, that one's rejected by inches right at the line. Oh, slapping in your face. I mean, face. The, the quarterback is 5'7", 150, Mason Williams. Hench is at 6'4", and he can get up. Watch Hench is at the defensive end position, time it. <laughs> now, he blocked that one with his armpit. Eric Williams could maybe jump in his back pocket. Well, it's going to be a field goal try from 41. They kick field goals? Well, we know they got a kicker that can do it, that's for sure. But this is a, a new guy getting an opportunity, right? And how about the block? No, oh, there was. In there was easily, and it was blocked and picked up by Dudenhafer. Give us Schulte on this one. What's the athleticism? Schulte was the one who leaked over the top. Running the high hur hurdles on this. What? Schulte come right over the top, 35. Gets right between the center and the right guard. Hands are extended, and he was the one who got the block on that. Great job on his part. So Schulte in there to block the kick. I thought they might have been trotting new people out there to kick and everything, but no, that was Alex Easley. And had the kick blocked. And coming off there, that injured player. Is that Warner? Well, I think his numbers rolled up. It might 18. be Jordan Backus. Backus. Yes, you are right, Jordan yeah. Backus. He got shot in the nose. So the Crusaders, after blocking the kick, have it first and ten. Porter back to throw it. Over the middle. Got his receiver. Caught it midfield. That one is caught there by Disler. Kyle Crane on the tackle. For Kyle Crane, 21. Yep. Field tackle. Disler's had a couple nice catches in the game. And some time for your quarterback to deliver the ball over the middle. Eye contact takes place. And how about all, I mean, you just talk about fundamentals for the team. Defensively, special teams, offensively, people doing the right things. That's why Webb City, over 600 victories. Yeah, Disler has 60 catches this season. Oh, make it 61. Oh, that was running down the field. Anthony Woodruff inside the 10. He caught it at the nine yard line. And Nathan Brown tried to come across on the safety position and knock that ball away. Disler got right in the hole there between the safeties. There's the ball thrown by Porter. Nice job in terms of putting some air underneath it. Allows the receiver to stay in stride. Woodruff makes the catch. 42 yards on that hookup from Porter to Woodruff. And Woodruff has over 50 catches on the season. Just shows you how well this Crusader team has thrown the football this season with Porter and those receivers. Yeah. Butch Jost. Butch Jost was taking it in the Wildcat formation and busting Crouch. the play up. Kate Crouch. 5'10", 175, Junior. Mr. Crouch with the crunching tackle. Watch him come through on the line on the run blitz here. Coming on the back side, he reads that guard pull and times it perfect. You can hear the contact all the way up here in the middle. With the clock rolling, that's a loss of one. Second down and goal from the 10-yard line now. Porter letting it rip to the end zone and it's caught by Hitches. Touchdown, Elias. Working against Kyle Ball, the series a little bit a height, maybe advantage to Mr. Hitches. Outstanding athlete, five foot ten, 
How about the body control on this? Again, quarterback just laying it up in the corner. Hench is able to turn around. And again, you love to see that in terms of just extending the arms. Eye contact, track it in, pack the ball all the way to your hands, touchdown on the play. And he's just a sophomore, as we've been talking about. 6'4", 215. What an athlete. What a name in this program. Exactly. We're talking about his dad, his grandfather, that had been part of this program, Ray Hinches and Chris Hinches. And in fact, Coach Pitts said those guys are some of his mentors in coaching. And here's the touchdown. Wow. This is Hale Hinches holding it in. 42-14 is your score in the Class 4 title game. Agents, when it comes to insurance, people feel lost. That's a dead end. Don't know which way to turn. Turn around? That's why we present people with options, to help them find coverage that fits their needs. Almost there. Hey. The new maze record. Uh, really? I have no idea. We don't keep track of that kind of stuff. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS. Crusaders just scored a touchdown. Ten-yard hookup from Porter to Hinches. Yes. There's Hale Hinches. White Porter, nice job on the throw that time. You can see him. And that's the off-season program. That was Crouchy throw. Again, him and wide receiver on the same page. Now, what do you think Hale Hinches is going to weigh when he's a senior? Yeah, that's a frame there. Yeah, it is a frame. I think maybe I'd write a book on the Baldy uh, Buffet program. <laughs> Now, what did you weigh as a sophomore in high school? Can, can you go back that far in your wow, mind? Wow, let me see if there's two brain cells, if I can get them clicking <laughs> here this early in the morning or in the early afternoon, excuse me. Um, and by the time you were a senior? I think my, I was a sophomore in high school. I think I was about 185. No way. Yes. Really? And a senior about 220. And then about fourth year into the NFL about, well, it depended. I, I'll stop at 300. <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't be a diplomat. I don't, <laughs> I don't know when to stop. <laughs> Those cheers were for you, Baldy. Yes, they were. They were. They, Elias they Faithful, me. they're having fun here today yeah, watching their are. team. I mean, it was a it's, a, it's huge to make it here. Exactly. You go through the season that they did. They had some tremendous wins. Again, the big win against Harrisonville. Yeah, that was really big for the program. Yeah, I wasn't expecting them. I thought Harrisonville would come away with that, but again, Defensively, they got the job done, but today you run into Cardinals. Onside more like kick. the War Eagles, the way they do things on the field. Thing was hauled in by Nate Stack. Brown up there on the Stack. hands team. Stack. Onside kick. Texas. Recovered by Red Texas. Brown. First down and ten for the Cardinals. Yeah, John Roderick back in again at the quarterback at position. I think they went back with their starters now. Well, after they got it to within 28, I guess the starters come back out there. Is that it? So. Turbo <laughs> clock and the other guys come on. And here's the give on the run to Trey Parra. Yep. He's got nine yards on that play. Takes Cooper Smith And a spot. flag coming in. Fullback position. Flag on the play. And again, with having Cooper Smith and Phoenix Johnson in the backfield, Personal foul. But having both of those tailbone with their speed, now you can attack with that option to either side, left or right side. 
a lot of balance defensively. You can't begin to key either side now. And that offense is so precise. We've yes. talked about this. You know, in a community like Webb City, you have one high school that everybody's Dead funneling ball. through. Uh -huh. Personal foul, late hit against the defense. First down. And that all works down. And the kids come up through the system, running the same offense, doing the same things. By the time they get to Webb City, they're already kind of fluent in what's going on. It's a winning legacy that develops with the young, young football player carries over year in and year out. This is Cooper Smith. And he's tackled by Patrick Ward. And Ward 6'1", 172, junior. And the thing when you play against this option, if you get no penetration up front, again, it's, it's just, it's so easy for the quarterback in terms of on that handoff to the dive back. And again, they've had such success running with that the dive back. And there's nothing worse than the option. I mean, if you're going to stop the option, number one thing you have to do is be able to stop the dive because mentally it tears you apart when a team can just pound the ball down the field continuously four yards at a crack. That's what you've seen out of Webb City. Pitch back, Cooper Smith. And he's getting tackled. There's a little face mask maybe on that play. Well, Schulte was over there and also Mitchell All Bud. By Justice Schulte. That's what the crowd was saying. Schulte again, 35. His hands are on his knees. He's been running a, he's run a country mile from sideline to sideline trying to stop this option offense. Well, what a great career Justice yep. Schulte has had. Finishing it up here today in the title game. Maybe not the way that he wanted to for his team. But that guy has been everywhere. Cooper Smith. Take him down to the five-yard line. No chance for Schulte to make that play because his defensive tackle is seven yards down the field, cutting him off from getting into a pursuit angle. Shumagala was the guy that brought him down, but not before he picked up the first down at the five, and it'll now be first and goal. 20 yards down the field. And you don't see a lot of negative plays in this team, Webb City. Only one was just the, just the sack here, and that, and that was it in the turnover. But besides that, I mean, every play, again, positive yardage. Here's Para down to the goal line, just short. Trey Para, 5'10", 185, junior. Take nothing away from Elias, as you said, to get back to the dome. Get here to play against Webb City. You don't see these type of offenses most of the year running the option like this. Do not have a lot of time. It's a short week to prepare for it. And, and how about Schulte on this one? Yeah, and I think Para, did he lose the football? He did, but Schulte was the one who came over the top just laying out. Watch number 35, Schulte. We saw him on the block. Here he comes. He's just going to shoot that A gap. Look at him just lay out, reaching for the quarterback. And it is Crusader football. And he caused a fumble on that. Colin Lavery. And again, it was Schulte, though. Initially, he destroyed the timing of the play, just laying out. So Lavery picked up the fumble, but well, that guy has once again put his body out there on the line. Does it this time at the goal line. And again, he just goes right over the top, laying out. <laughs> and he just gets his hands on that side. And there's, there's the Lavery underneath the just pulling all. the ball out. But again, forced quarterback to maybe have to pull back and get a little bit more depth than he wanted to. Yeah, the disruption started there. Here's Bush Jost. He floated that one. Out to the five-yard line. Yeah, and over there on the stop, right Nate Brown. And Bush Jost is going to be back again next That's year, too. What? Yeah, and you know, that's the thing you notice here. When you yep. look at guys like Henches as a sophomore, Porter as a junior, junior. Bush Jost is a junior. Henches back and Porter at the quarterback position, right? Tannehill's there. a junior, another yeah. wide receiver. And they're going to be able to throw the ball. They're going to do some good things again next year. Here's Porter. There you go. Got his receiver. It's caught at the 24 yard line. Henches throwing some strikes, time in the pocket. 
Again, ability to throw over the middle, outside the numbers. Watch the release. Good job of getting eye contact with the receiver. Look uh, again. Hey, you like those hands by Hinch. Exactly. Look, and look at the route. Again, getting behind the linebackers in front of the safeties that time. Getting behind Humphreys, the linebacker. Nice job by Hentges on the route. Pitching catch, first down the play. Hale Hentges. Here's Porter going upstairs again. This time he was looking for Dissler. They will lose Woodruff and Dissler, the senior receivers that piled up most of the big yardage. But how about even to throw outside the numbers on that one, Neil? Wasn't bad. Again, if Dissler that time just kind of pushed that route up a little bit more before he went to the corner. Again, your quarterback has a chance in terms of making that throw. But again, there's the accuracy, the arm strength. You fall behind, makes it tough though. You know, we become one dimensional. But still, though, quarterback Wyatt Porter showing the reason why he's had a great year. Yeah, again, he's coming back. A lot of parts coming back next yep. season. Porter looking over the middle. This time it was intended for Woodruff. A little jousting there at about the 40 yard line. That ball comes out like a laser, doesn't it? And he leads his receivers, puts it in the right spot. That time a little bit too far. There's the All State performer, Anthony Woodruff. And guys like Woodruff, while they won't be coming back to Halias to play, those guys look to play at another level. Yeah, we'll be seeing FCS, them on. Division yep. II type schools looking at him. Who knows what else might materialize. Here's Porter coming near side. A little bit too far that time. And yeah. over the top of Disler. Yeah, looking to go to a deep route that time. Actually had Henches underneath. But again, a time like this, got to try to push the ball down the field. Well, Dissler's a guy, his older brother, Clint, was the quarterback in 2009 when they came to the state title. Lost to Carney in that ball game. He's a baseball pitcher, backup quarterback as well. Outstanding athlete. And caught over 60 balls this season. 241 left. And rushing three again, time to throw the ball. Looking for Dissler. A little bit back far. there in the coverage, Kyle Baldassara. Baldassari. Kyle Baldassari. 5'10, 165 junior. You like watching Wyatt Porter, number 12 quarterback. Good height, 6'2, and he, he can air it out. He put the ball deep. It's too bad the offense got behind. Could do some things, but again, only a junior back next year. Got a lot of the moving parts coming back, so. Look for these kids as soon as this game's over, begin the off-season program, getting ready for next year. That flips it back over to Webb City, first and 10 from the 24-yard line of the Crusaders. And the Crusaders fans still in it, man. They're rallying yep. behind their defense down here. You can hear, hear them. them. They got the chant going. Keeping the buzz up. And on the carry this time for Webb City. Logan Cloy. 36, Logan Cloy, 5'9. Powering inside. Again, all the time, even when he wants to, whatever back's toting the rock when they come through in that dive. Nice job. Everybody keeps their head up so they can see. I mean, when they can make the cut, good vision, press the line of scrimmage, hit the hole right where they need to be. Again, it's all about execution. Everyone doing the right steps. Closest game that Webb City had this season, 30 to 15. Harbor in Arkansas. You don't see any weakness on this okay, offense or defense. Again, hats off to them. You know, we, Webb City, everybody knows about what they can do running the option, but defensively at that linebacker position, Wow, can they cover Brown? Along with Justin McCullough. Yeah, we saw that today. Fowler, Humphrey, Crane, Brown, all of them. I mean, you know, they, they work inside, outside, they walk all over. They can bring the blitz from off the edge, inside. They're efficient running the, those blitzes. Also, Jose Spear at the defensive end. Artebrun, Casey Craig in the middle. Those three guys were able to dominate the line of scrimmage. And bouncing this one to the near sideline. Touchdown. That's Para on the touchdown. 20 yarder. Got it done. Four points on the board. And a 
Gifford that time. And the efficiency, great job on the mesh point all day long. Doesn't matter who the quarterback is or the dive back on that. Nice job on the mesh point in terms of quarterback putting the ball right in the belly of his dive back. And again, there's never any stopping. There's never any in terms of not placing the ball where it needs to be. It's just a machine happening on every play. Easily on to try the extra point. And with those guys, Phoenix Johnson and Cooper Smith graduating, kind of looks like Trey Para might have a burst and, and a guy off. that's going to fill in okay the next season. And again, when you're just switching backs in this option offense, a lot of times that mesh point where the quarterback is looking to hand the ball off or pull it, again, you never see any disruption in the play. The timing's exactly right. Quarterback has his eyes focused where he needs to be. Running back isn't looking around. He's going right down here where he needs to be. Coachman against the defense. Penalty is declined. Still the try. And Alex Easley on to try the extra point. What a weapon he has been. Seven kickoffs into the end zone. And you heard Corey talking about him in his career. And he came on as a freshman, weighed 110 pounds. And then here he has kicked every meaningful kick for the last four years. And he continues to drill extra points. 49-14 the score now. Here's Barra. Yeah, again, again, I can't say enough about just the execution of this offense. And Barra, nice job again on that dive back. Hitting right where he needs to be in the proper angle. Again, the explosion, no hesitation in the backfield. Big guys up front getting it done. Again, with John Roderick at that quarterback, the way he's running the offense, and then everybody else stepping up. Here's your kicker. Just put it in the end zone every time. Easy. Somebody's going to like having him. Oh, yeah. At the next level. Oh, yeah. It's a kick like that every time. Alex Easley, 5'10", now 160, the senior. And he is, this is his 59th game he's played in. I think Corey said that earlier. I guess he, after that many games, he starts getting the Social Security check, I believe, <laughs> right? I mean, that's, that's basically 15 games a season. What's going on in high school where you got 15 games? games. They're 14 and 0 coming in. Elias 10 and 4. A lot of playoff games when you make it to this point. And dancing up the sideline, Griffin McCurran bringing that one up. Forty-two seconds left here in the state championship game as it rolls with the turbo clock. 35-point lead for Webb City. And you just can't fall behind Webb City. You, you, you just can't do it. Even if you're not scoring, you just got to be able to move the ball consistently just because their offense is so high-powered. And then when you get down, and again, the speed of this defense for Webb City. I don't know if they get enough compliments on that because up front, I mean, everybody running to the football. McCurran on the carry. And that will do it. Webb City wins the state championship again in 2012. I think they're going to a couple seconds left to go here. Five seconds left to go. There'll be one more play. Timeout on the play. Elias. Crusaders want to get off another play, give some of these guys a chance. Again, work on maybe some things for next year. Timeout, Elias, first team charge timeout of the half. Clock operator, please put 11 seconds on the clock. Well, Neil, I, I think it answers the question. You always don't have to be the biggest and the strongest, but when you're the fastest, it makes up for a lot of things. And Web City's defense, I think from compared from last year to this year, such improvement again but also, too, just the speed at the linebackers. They can go from the flats back inside. They can cover so much ground. It makes it almost impossible offensively to, you know, get a consistent drive going. So Coach Pitts and the Crusaders try to get one more play off here. One more chance to put the ball in the end zone. Order to throw it, Aaron going out. upstairs, and knocked away, intended for Woodruff. There's still two seconds on the clock, there it goes. 
And Webb City, another state championship for the Cardinals. Father and son got to be happy for this one, huh? Yeah, no question about it. Coach said he couldn't have scripted it any better for the way his son played this season. And that's more than that for Coach Roderick, obviously. I mean, he goes back. This is his 16th season as the head coach. And even before that as an assistant coach and also went to Webb City. I mean, deeply entrenched into this program. And I think we'll be seeing John Jr. for the next couple of years. And somewhere. Yeah, well, somewhere. I know father has the... <laughs> the uh, the pitch, gorilla connection. The gorilla connection. And his I, daughter's there playing basketball. I wanted to mention maybe some other possibilities, but we <laughs> understand that that can become fighting work, so we'll leave it as that. But really impressed with John Roderick. And again, the complete coaching staff of Webb City. Two years in a row, I've had a chance to watch them. But really, I think from last year, even that much more improvement defensively for them. And now on both sides of the ball, just other domination. And there you go, the Man. season's over for some of those seniors. Might be the family there of Brent Wilson, 6'2", yeah. 270 senior. There's Cooper Smith's, Smith's family. family. They all got signs, huh? And Cooper Somebody Smith. had an electric sign. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, they did. And they, I'll tell you what, you are right. This team is electric. And the way they get things done. And, you know, it just starts with that quarterback position. You've got to have the leader on the field. And, again, you can't overemphasize that. You're running an option, but also having a quarterback doing the passing game, the footwork. And you don't have that much time in practice to work on all these little things. I just think it's a testament to John Roderick, what he's done in the offseason, to make himself an efficient and accurate quarterback. Let's go down to Corey. Hey, thanks, guys. I'm down on the field with Webb City senior quarterback John Roderick. And, John, an explosive offense today against Valley Catholic. Who do you give the biggest credit to today? Our line, definitely. Our line executed up front. They did what they needed to do. You know, just got the job done. Well, i got to tell you something. Today is your 11th state championship. That ties you with Valley Catholic for the most state championships on any level of football. How special was that to accomplish that with you and your father here today? Oh, it just means the world to us. You know, football's our life. Well, talk a little bit about what's going to happen now. I know almost the entire city of Webb City is over here in the stands. You guys going to have a party tonight? Oh, there will definitely be a party. <laughs> well, congratulations, man. It was a great game. We enjoyed watching you all afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, we'll send it back upstairs to you. All right, thanks, Corey. He had a big game. It all started with a touchdown run to get the party started here. And he made sure the eyes kind of lit up when he talked about the party. And here he is running the option, folks. Great job in terms of reading what the defense is giving you, whether it's going to be a pitch or he's going to keep it again rolling out of the pocket. And this is what I talked about. Look at the poise. Again, now in the open field, you're thinking about, yeah, he could possibly be a gorilla here in the future, the way he can run this option. But again, his accuracy, his ability to run with the football, Neil, and it, the quarterback position, he understands the leadership and what's needed. He got it done today. Absolutely did. And we also want to be mindful of the outstanding season that Helias had. Yes. 10 and 4 on the season. Away from them, Coach they got Pitt. on a run. There they are, the runners up here in the state title game. And Wyatt Porter himself as a quarterback. He threw some nice passes today. Also, wouldn't be shocked to see these guys back in the mix next season oh, with some of the guys they have coming back. And you might see both of them back here again. <laughs> Young, energetic coach, yes. Coach Phil Pitts. His brother, Andy, the defensive coordinator. He made and, uh, some great improvements. But again, you run against a team like this that runs the options so well in Webb City. You don't have that much time, Neil. Remember, these kids just played on Saturday. You've got four days to get ready for this game, basically. Yeah, that's right. You know, you yeah, have a short up. week. You have the holiday and everything. And enough take nothing away from Webb City. But when you play Webb City, you need a bye week <laughs> to get ready. Now they win it today, 49-14, Class 4 champions. Just a nice receiver, Henches, Hale Henches. will be back next year again. So again, that's a, that's a happy team right there. There you go. They've been doing that a lot in Web City, haven't they? Yes, they have. They understand that feeling. And that is win number 45 in a row. I'll just say it's 
for the school. What is that? Their fifth thousand, five thousand win, something, something like, like that. Corey went through it all. You want me to throw it back down to him? Yeah, let's throw it back to Corey. <laughs> Let me go through those numbers again. Uh, let's take a break. 49-14 here in the Class 4 title game. Webb City on top once again in St. Louis in the Dome. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go. One hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burned. That's it. You're not going to come to my house and tell me how to cook a hamburger. Like, oh, I don't really you, you wouldn't do it there. You gotta be crazy. So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Webb City State Champion once again, 49-14. They win it in Class 4 at the Show Me Bowl. Neil Harwell and Richard Balding are here in between games. This Class 4's title game is over, and Webb City wins it once again. And just what a dynasty they have rolling down there in Webb City. Yeah, it's rolling thunder on both sides of the ball, whether it be offense, whether it be defense. You see people getting after it, and again, team speed. It always makes coaches look good, and I just remember as a player, I didn't mind the big slow guys, but the fast guys, I knew it was a long <laughs> afternoon, and it, it turned out today for Elias. But again, it's just a testament to the coaching staff of Webb City, the city and the community in terms of, again, the, this team just reloads every year. Yeah, you've got a chance. You've had a chance to see them, what, the last three or four seasons for yep. sure up here in the state title game, and they just continue to do it every year. How do you rank this team when you look back at the other ones? Well, in terms of running the option or a split back veer, exactly. I mean, there's nobody better. I mean, the efficiency of it, and it starts at the quarterback, uh, whether it be tailback, both of the running backs and Phoenix Johnson, Cooper Smith, it, up front, the big guys, they're efficient in terms of the blocking. You don't see a lot of negative plays. You, just don't, you don't see mishandling of the football and everything. So, again, that's a testament to coaching that you do the proper footwork, all the little things, because in the option, if you don't, Bad things are going to happen, and I've seen them now two years in a row, and you know what? I haven't seen any negative plays. We talked a lot about the offense for Webb City, but the Cardinals' defense was tough. You talk about the linebacker yep. speed, Baldy. Those guys were running loose back there, making all kinds of plays. Yeah, again, Humphreys, Fowler. I mean, they're everywhere. Spear up front. Spear up front. I mean, they came on the blitzes so efficient in their movements. They don't stay blocked. They're open field tackling. They break down, and they're going to crunch you every time. So, again, they see the field well. I mean, I'm really impressed with Humphreys, 29. His ability to stay, go from the flats back inside. How about this block also, too, on special teams when they need to get something down? Nathan Brown on that one coming off the edge. White picking it up, scrambling with the football. And here are the stats. This says the whole story right here. And one thing you don't see is turnovers on this thing. Stats brought to you by Bomberito Automotive Group. 361 yards rushing. Wow. That says it all, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. The former lineman, believe me, when you can rush the football like that, physically you wear the defense out, but mentally they don't want to play anymore. And we and watched that happens. veer the entire first or the entire ball game and watched that veer work and it's yeah. just precision. Everybody in sync, the linemen getting their angles. Yep. Talk about that a little bit and well, how they make all that work. First of all, when you go to the running back position, it's the split back veer, and every time, again, on that, you've got to make sure you're hitting with it. If it's a midline veer, you're going right over center, or if you're going over the guard for the inside veer, over the tackle on the outside veer. So I was watching the dive backs. Every time, they're right on track. Number two, the mesh point between quarterback and running back was perfect every time. Number three, you want to see the quarterback. Are they looking at the dive back, or are they looking at the reads down the line? John, at the quarterback, absolutely tremendous in terms of keeping his eyes at his keys so he can make the pitch or keep it. And you saw some of the big runs of John Roderick. Absolutely phenomenal to quarterback. And again, to do that as a running quarterback in the option, but yet also have the passing game he has, that's a testament to that young man 
working in the offseason on both things because the footwork is completely different. The mindset is, but he got it done right today. This was the Class 4 game, obviously, today. Yep. Webb City wins that. Last night, Kirkwood had the party. Oh, back to this I one. mean, the town I goes up, crazy. Buddy. We, we were dodging traffic getting out of here. Whoa, they were I so tell happy. You what, it was a Super Bowl party. They won their first state title ever last night. And Corey Riggs able to catch up with Coach Irvin, the winning coach last night. First state title ever for Kirkwood. We're here with Kirkwood Pioneer head coach Matt Irvin. And Matt, first of all, congratulations on the win. Let's first start by talking about a state championship for a team that's never got one. What does this mean to your players and to the school in Kirkwood? Well, we're a little bit unique in that we were one school in one town. So I think it goes beyond the school community into our, our entire uh, Kirkwood, you know, city of Kirkwood. And I think uh, there's going to be, I think tomorrow's going to be a little crazy around there. And I think even school Monday will be a little, a little chaotic as well. But I think it, you know, there's a lot of deep roots. It's 114th year of Kirkwood football. And I think you know, we felt that support uh, every year. And I think uh, we're very glad and very grateful for the opportunity to deliver it to our community and to our school. What do you think expectations are going to be like now? You've only been the head man at Kirkwood for three years, and already you bring home a trophy. What does that mean for you guys going forward? Well, I'll worry about that tomorrow. I'm going to enjoy tonight a little longer. But, you know, we're certainly, you know, I want to be at a place, and I think all our, you know, most people in my position want to be at a place where expectations are high, and we've got great support at our school and our administration, and I think, uh, you know, great coaches and great kids, so I'm very fortunate. Let's talk about your kids. Tell me about your seniors and the performance that they put on tonight here in the Dome. Well, it's really a culmination of, of, of many years of work for them, and, and as it is certainly with Fort Osage as well, and just uh, it's really a great capstone to a really good career. Many of those players are three-year starters and been you know, varsity players for many years and, and accomplished varsity players, and I think it just meant a lot to them to, to kind of finish together and uh, to really complete a task they had put before themselves uh, some time ago. Talk about the performance of your senior quarterback tonight. Mr. Bishop put on a heck of a show, three big touchdowns. Well, yeah, and I think so. And I think he would go back and say there's some plays he didn't make. And that's just kind of how he is. And just he's very tough on himself. And he he's, uh, has high expectations for himself, as we mentioned earlier. And I think uh, – you know, good quarterbacks can do that. They can have a throw they miss. They can have a series where they're a little bit off rhythm and then come back and then, and then play better as the game uh, advances. And I think he's done that. And he's the right kind of player and right kind of person you want as a leader of your team and as a quarterback. Talk about your defense. They did a tremendous job against a Fort Osage offense that has really been able to move the ball. Steve McBee, a very accomplished quarterback, but your guys on the defensive side of the ball really stepped up tonight. Well, I think, you know, our, our – our defensive backs did a great job being able to play man coverage and gave us extra guys in the box. And I think uh, our coach, uh, defensive staff, Coach Heidi and Mike Brown and Willie Parks and, and uh, Greg Wayne did a great job coaching the kids, getting them ready. And then I would say thirdly, I think, uh, you know, our, our defense line really played relentlessly tonight. And I thought they had a really good plan trying to really use the edges on offense. And I think uh, you know, we were very fortunate. They had some plays they probably wish they could get back. But I'm, I'm very grateful for the work our kids did in the week, and it paid off tonight. Coach, congratulations on the win, and hopefully it's the first of many state tiles at Kirkwood. Thank you so much. Many thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you, Corey. And Coach Irvin, as he screamed the voice out, that's yes. the way it is at the end of the year for coaches, right? End There's of the no season's over, left. they got nothing left. And he, exactly right. He wanted to celebrate a little bit after that. And we had a chance to walk out at the Dome afterwards. We saw that team, and you could see it in their eyes, the celebration, but again, the sense of the accomplishment that he did. The first championship, only third year there. Again, but now the expectations are we want it every year. Yeah, he said, I want high expectations. Well, now they're yeah, really they're high. high. And they're going to be there. They can't go any higher. Coach, coach, we're going to have the championship again this year, so the hard work begins again. Yeah, congratulations to Kirkwood, obviously, for winning the state title. We had three other games that day as well. Was we it did. yesterday? I can't I'm remember. Exactly I'm in a sure. fog right now. <laughs> it was yesterday, 9.30 yep. tilt that Stanbury won the eight-man championship. Then it was Penny over Valley Catholic in game two. Uh, and actually, it was... Maryville that beat John yeah, Burroughs in game two because class three was played before yep. class one and then Kirkwood on, won the, the nightcap. The numbers, I'm trying buddy. to get this all organized. <laughs> you got to navigate through all these yeah, classes. Yeah, absolutely do, but we had some really good games yesterday. Yes, we did. You know, start with Maryville over John Burroughs. Again, JBS third time back here, three years in a row coming to the Dome. Didn't win it, but again, to get back to the Dome three years in a row, my hat's off to their whole program over there. We had a chance to speak to their athletic director and everything, so called Zeke Elliott, who I thought has been the best running back I've seen here so far, you know, going to Ohio State. Penny, of course, yeah, down John by Burrows. Yeah, yeah, down by, by 14 in the first quarter. You thought it was going to be an ugly game. Turn around and absolute <laughs> domination and also throwing the football, too. Got a young sophomore quarterback who did really good. And then, of course, 
the Kirkwood Florida stage. What they did in terms of bottling up Stephen McBee so he couldn't run the football. Score was closer, but yet when they had to get things done, I think they went back and learned from that game against Staley last year. Staley went on that nine-minute drive. You saw the same thing by Jordan Bishop in the third quarter and the fourth quarter. Took control of the game, put the points on the board, and that was the difference. And again, congratulations to all those teams for even making it yeah. to the state title game. And the winners, Stanbury, Penny, Maryville, and Kirkwood. I'm told we have more football coming up today. Baldy, we are not done here. The Class 2 state championship, Lamar and Blair Oaks. And then it's Francis Howell and Blue Springs for the Class 6 title. And you know what, Neil, at this point, you have to say one thing. You, you, you've got, you cannot give enough kudos to all the parents. Hell right? yeah. And I'm still giving kudos to my parents because <laughs> all the years that they fed us boys. And you had three of them that went all the way and played in the NFL. Hell, yes, and also three sisters. What was that meal ticket like? Well, you know what, Dad still wants to check every week, so you know what, that's what he calls me for. But again, you got to give kudos to the parents. They're the ones who take care of these kids, make sure they're ready to go. The coaches and all the other support people behind them to come here to Dome to make sure it's a great outing. And it was. All the teams battling, so again, I had to off to everybody. A lot of state championships being contested here in the state of Missouri. And how about girls softball? Let's Mom take a look at how girls softball went this season. For them. Killian Softball Complex in Springfield was the site of the 37th Missouri State High School Activities Association Softball Championships. In the Class 1 Championship, Silex defeated Naylor 7-6. Silex scored runs in each of the first three innings to go up 6-0 and led the rest of the way. In Class 2, Pleasant Hope earned first place honors with a 9-6 victory over Brookfield. Pleasant Hope had trailed by six runs, but rallied with four runs in the sixth and five runs in the seventh, rallying to win 9-6. Centralia broke a scoreless game with three runs in the seventh to take the Class 3 championship. Truman was crowned Class 4 champions. Truman scored runs in the 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th to build a 7-0 lead for the title. Congratulations to those teams for making yes. the state championship play there. And Truman won the state title. You saw some of those stats there at the end. And, or highlights in the end. and you, you wanted to break down the softball game, well, didn't you? You were looking at me, pulling my leg, wanting to break down softball. Well, Go ahead. you have the, the background in baseball. <laughs> You're always wanting to find out who is the former baseball player or is playing baseball. You tell me about that. You think you could hit that softball? At this point in my life, miles an hour I can't you? hit my, I mean, <laughs> are you kidding me? My, I don't my know. fast twitch me. muscles have turned into uh, They've kind of disappeared, 5K huh? runs and 10K runs. Well, I'll tell stuff. you what, when you play Web City, you better have some <laughs> If I ever twitch. had any. <laughs>
We'll, well leave it as that. I'll tell you what, been great here, though, at the Show Me Bowl. I'll tell you what, it's fantastic football, both sides. A lot of, again, my just hats off to all the support people that get involved with this. Because I know as a former player, what it takes to be a champion, it's not always the players on the field, but it's coaches, all the assistants. Yeah, it's a program. It is a program. These two teams demonstrated that we yep, just community. saw. Webb City, yep. Helias, all their fans, all their coaches, all their Young players. Kids, Congratulations yep. to them. Webb City wins this ball game today. Class 4, they are the state champions. They win it 49-14 to 14 in Class 4. And we have two more games coming right at you. We'll have the Class 2 game coming up in about a half hour. And then after that, we'll have the Class 6 Six. championship game between Blue Francis Springs. Howell Ooh. and Blue Springs. So great job by the guys out in the truck. Couple they of put more up games. with us, didn't they? They did. <laughs> they did it again. And we will kick it to break and be back with you for game two today in about a half hour. We're not doing game two? I mean, we're going to take a break for a while. <laughs> Lamar and Blair Oaks will go at it in the Class 2 title game it's today. The catch. Web City wins Class 4. Rolling for Thunder. Lions. Cooper Smith. For Richard Baldinger, this is Neil Hartwell. We'll see you later on tonight in Class 6. Don't miss it. He had to go run off the game ball. He's, he's coming right back. I thought I made that clear. Shut up, sit the fuck down. Uh, he actually did a boxing match with me, a boxing deal yeah. up at St. Joe's about four or five years ago. Yeah. I haven't talked to him before. Well, I've been doing the TV for a long 
Okay. Sure. Sure. Hold on. Good to go. Hey, what's up, man? All right, Michael. What we're gonna have to do is swing a little bit this way. Hey, what's way. up, man? And then what we'll have to do uh -huh. is put you behind me like that. Yeah, I don't know. Can okay. stretch? Um, yeah, I guess we could do it. <laughs> we, that's the perfect thing. Okay. Okay. Check one, two. Is that good? One, two, three, four. Check one, two. You got it, bud. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Neil. All right. All right. Okay. Bashore Otto. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. downtown St. Louis, a shot of the Gateway Arch as we continue our coverage of Show Me Bowl 2012, brought to you by Bomberito Automotive. As we bring you inside the Edward Jones Dome, it's the Class 2 title game as Blair Oaks from Jefferson City get set to take on the defending Class 2 state champions, the Lamar Tigers. And the road to the Class 2 championship for Blair Oaks, they knock off Holden last week, and of course they had the victory two weeks ago against Clark County as they look for another state championship today. Right. No, that's fine. That's fine. Welcome back to downtown St. Louis, a shot of the Gateway Arch as our coverage of Show Me Bowl 2012 continues and it's brought to you by Bomberito Automotive. The championship game here this afternoon in Class 2 features the Blair Oaks Falcons as they take on the defending champions, the Lamar Tigers. And there you see Lamar, the defending champions, their road to the state championship game as they knocked off Carruthersville 69-12. Meanwhile, for the Falcons from Jefferson City, Blair Oaks, their road to the state title game in Class 2. There you see their semifinal victory last week as they knock off Holden by a score of 46-32. to 32. Welcome inside the Edward Jones Dome in our broadcast booth. Our friend Michael Young with us hey, here for Class on, 2. Man. Good yeah. to see you, my Happy friend. To be here. Well, Lamar was impressive last year in the Class 2 championship. They're going to try to do it again. And we've seen a lot of, Michael, impressive running backs in this weekend's Show Me Bowl 2012. We're going to see a couple again here in this Class 2 championship game. Let's start with the Lamar Tigers. Gerard Brashore put on a great performance in the state championship game last year. Expect it again today. Well, don't be alarmed when you see a six-foot running back who averages 160 yards per game. He's close to 2,000 yards. He's over six foot, so don't be surprised when you see Jared Beshore score touchdowns in your living room. No doubt about it. Meanwhile, for Blair Oaks, they have a terrific running back tandem, but it's Derek Otto that we're going to feature in this matchup for Blair Oaks. Well, Derek Otto, he's the fullback. He's the dot back. Normally, you don't see fullbacks who lead their team in rushing, but he's close to also 2,000 yards, over 26 touchdowns. Keep your eye on number 42, Derek Otto. All right. It's the Falcons and the Tigers getting set to tee it up in our Class 2 title game from the Edward Jones Dome. Back with the opening kick right after this.
lot of Michael impressive running backs in this weekend's Show Me Bowl 2012. We're going to see a couple again here in this Class 2 championship game. Tandem, but it's Derek Otto that we're going to feature in this matchup for Blair Oaks. Well, Derek Otto, he's the fullback. He's the dot back. Is getting set to tee it up in our Class 2 title game from the Edward Jones Dome. Back with the opening kick right after this. Derek Otto, he's the fullback, he's the dot back. Normally you don't see fullbacks who lead their team in rushing, but he's close to also 2,000 yards, over 26 touchdowns. Keep your eye on number 42, Derek Otto. All right, it's the Falcons and the Tigers getting set to tee it up. In our